Don't adjust that dial. Coffee with Curmudgeons is next. Well, I'm going to make myself a cup of good morning, America. You all want some? <coughs> it's the best damn coffee you're going to get anywhere, buddy. It's Coffee with Curmudgeons. Uh, if you haven't been here before, uh, this is my hair. And um, <clears throat> this is the evolution of the hair. I don't know. Failed Twin Peaks references. Look, look, this isn't... Why, why, why doesn't this get set mm. up? I do this in rehearsal. We're mm. having some technical issues. I'm just going to say right now. Okay, first, hi, we're back. <laughs> that sucks. Second, well, I'll get to second in a second. Mm. First... Reason number 39, 39. that uh, Hillary lost the election, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen, Jason Allen. Hey! Oh, look. And your camera's weird, yeah. too. Well, she can she can blame me. It's yeah. cool. I'll, I'll take the heat for that. Oh, what's wrong with your camera? I can't Why are you over me. there? What? I don't know. I don't know. See, it's because we have yeah. not done this show in a week. Yes. So, uh, yes. oh, I bumped it. That's what I did. And here's the big deal. Okay. 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 Here's the thing. We haven't been here in a week, and there's reasons, and we'll get into that. And we've got a lot to talk about. It's like, uh, well, it's a little after 9 o'clock. There's been a lot of things happening in a week. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I, I came down here. Everything's everything's smooth, and I control the show on this little cheap Android pad by the fine folks in uh, Digiland, China. Digiland. And look what it's doing. It's reminding me that it's a, yeah, this thing hasn't booted up today. Evidently, Digiland is in China. <sighs> this is uh, this is how I control the show, and this is what it's doing right mm. here. It's just sitting here. It's, there's nothing. This is all this pad is for is to control productions, and it's dead. It's dead, Jim. So that's mm. so. Uh, so I'm on my phone today. There we go. Doing the doing the show. Isn't technology grand? No. It's not, and now I got to fix this camera. Evidently, it's not. It's not. Technology is not grand in Digiland. So, two things. First yeah. of all, last Monday we weren't here, mm-hmm. and then we weren't here on Friday. Yeah. Or no, we weren't. Well, we weren't here on Friday too, but we weren't here on Wednesday. Yeah. I blame Monday on my kids. Yeah. I do. What happened? Squarely right at their door. I'm just gonna set that down and walk away from it. Well, look, as you as you know, as a parent. When the school year starts, uh, they go back to school, they start learning their book learning and stuff, but homework is not the only thing they bring home from school. These kids are little Petri dishes, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I I started feeling, cr- I mean, about Sunday night, I started feeling bad, yeah. and, and I knew something was up. I said, oh, what's going on? So after interrogating the little uh, vertically challenged <laughs> dudes, uh, they told me, that uh, some people in their class were sick, and I'm like, well, oh, great. And so he brought home the flu. It's okay, okay. Monday, it's kind of shot because you know no one wants no one wants to see me as a human sprinkler. Mm-hmm. And so I figure, okay, it's a 24 hour bug. I'll you know I'll be back on t- on Tuesday. Everything's rolling. It's fine. And it lingered. Mm-hmm. It now into Wednesday. So obviously Wednesday I couldn't do the you know. The political show, because you know, no one wants to see. It, you know, I'm the only. I'm used to spewing stuff on that show, mm-hmm. but I'm not used to spewing other stuff on that show. So I figured no. And then Friday, you know, uh, there was a. Uh, it was a what working day, right? I mean, yeah, there, there, so, was, there yeah. was gigs to be to so be I, had. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, so I was doing a thing on Friday, so we had that yeah. scheduled in. So I'm, I'm feeling and good so, now. I'm, so, you know, Friday was going to yeah. be off because that happens sometimes. Sometimes yeah. sometimes someone has a scheduling, something else is going on. And so we have to, we do and we get a heads up. But uh, yeah. I swear I just saw a light go out too. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Monday, see, Monday. Well, it, yeah. It looked like something huh. just like kind of flashed off there. We'll we'll be looking at that. Are we looking at some paranormal stuff here this morning? <sighs> well, we had auras being red. No, it's okay, I guess. Yeah. That's weird. I just, maybe that was just me. Um, probably just me because I'm just like sitting here with the technical stuff going. Oh, that's not working <laughs> after a week. That's just really bug. It's really. Mm. I'm so so cranky. All right, yeah. stop being cranky. Did you land? Get on with the show. What's well, okay Thanks. to be cranky here land? though? Um, yeah. So uh, so so while you were off, so you sh- 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 you look different. Well, you know, I I was sitting around last night. Uh, just got done reading a, a nice. <laughs> A nice uh, kind of biographical book of the relationship between Ben Franklin and his kid. And I said to myself, gee, Jason, what I would want, you look like? I read that spread in Playboy, too. Yeah, it was good. <clears throat> yeah. 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 You know, the whole thing about the, you know, at the Hefner, at the, yeah, the whole <laughs> French thing, you know. Ben's just sitting in a nice chair with uh, some of the French. Right. I, I'm sorry. I know that's inappropriate for the morning. Now I'm being inappropriate. Well. So. You were sitting around. I I asked myself, what would I look like without my goatee? (laughs) Strange. I mean, listen, if you leave me alone for a week, this is what's going to happen, right? Yeah. And so uh, the wife says, I don't know. Uh, And I said, well, you know, if it looks like crap, you know, I can uh, just grow it back in a couple weeks. It's it's cool. So I I took the razor to it. Yeah. And uh, That's like what happened with me last last winter. And now that's up for grabs, right? Because mm. it's going to be like last winter. Yeah, I didn't shave for a week, Ooh. and yeah. I ended up. And when we started the show, I had a beard. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Which that's right. I thought looked rather distinguished. It was, it, was, it was rugged. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, I I didn't I didn't grizzly it, no. grizzly Adams it out, you know, because I mean I I well could. I, that's right. You know, I definitely could just like you know, since I was seventeen, Jason seventeen, right. right. I was a mountain man. As, you as soon as it. you as soon as you jumped over that barrier of puberty, bam! Yeah, that's you're, right. Yeah, I, there's a picture of me at 17 with a beard. With the yeah, with the wow. uh, the panel. Uh, I'm I'm in the basement with the wood oh, the wood paneling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Which yeah. Is, that's what we should have here, the classic wood paneling. I got my beard and and uh, and uh, uh, I'm wearing a. a one of them Pendleton wool, oh, the, you know the yeah. So you're like lumberjack there. Oh, this is ten years before the grunge. Wow, ooh, like ten years. Like I was already so this is a trendsetter. Yeah, wow. Yeah, we're talking eighty or something like this. I was already. I could have been. Did you give the parents attitude the teenage angst? You know. Yeah. Good, excellent. Because no, that, that's just, full grunge I, right there. I just dude. Go up to breakfast. Call me Jeremy. <laughs> Call me Jeremy. <laughs> Spoken. That's right. Anyway, I, <laughs> Jeremy spoke. Oh, yeah. that's bad. Crap joke. Yeah, Crap yeah. joke. Good for the morning. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like a pri- I was very proud of that. Now I looked at it, it's like, you kids. I was there before. <laughs> that's right. I'm a man yeah. amongst boys. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had a friend of mine. Uh, Smells like teen spirit. That's uh, right. You were um, saying that stuff years before yeah. Cobain ever thought of it. Oh right? yeah. 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 yeah, I would walk into the lunchroom at school. Right, Aberdeen, Smells Washington. Of, oh yeah, right. right. <laughs> you just walk in there, yeah. you know. Hey, how you doing? Smells like Teen Spirit in here. Nah, you know. Oh, there's a pepper. A- Aberdeen, Oak Grove, Milwaukee, Gladstone, all the same, you basically. Could, you could literally walk into Aberdeen and confuse yourself <laughs> yes. that hey, I'm in Oak Grove. Yeah, I mean, I would say Oak yeah. Grove is kind of, you know. It's, Oregon's Aberdeen or whatever. That should know. be that should be our new like city. Well, actually, we're not even yeah. a city. We're just unincorporated <laughs> Clackamas County. But oh, if we do become a city, we're gonna become our our city motto is gonna be we are the Aberdeen of Oregon. Yes. Yeah, Why so, not? So we just call this an unincorporated podcated podcast. We're in the unincorporated territory of a podcast. Yeah. Somewhere in the vicinity yeah. of something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, it was like. Uh, yeah, Oak Grove. Yeah. yeah, I had a friend of mine. Okay, yeah. he went to high school. Th- this guy, he he grew a mustache, and I and I I am See, not okay. He fourteen. So yeah, he, so, so I was like getting the yeah. stuff going on, right? Yeah. Which you, you feel good when you're a boy, you know. Your job going through. Oh wow, you know. I'm you a get man. Your first, your first little things. I, right. You, 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 I think 
maybe this doesn't happen now because we live in the 21st century and God knows what that means. But for us curmudgeons... Monsanto up, made right? us all You remember men the first before. little peach fuzz and stuff? And you'd be right. like, Dad, 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 do I need to shave? Do I... I don't you just get out of here without a peach fuzz? You right. Know? Get out of here, Patches. Come back when you're 19. Yeah, yeah you know? exactly. Uh-huh. Exactly. And, and But, you know, you'd get that... And okay, so the thing is, you said mustache. Here's here's the thing yes. with that picture, and I don't have the picture here. Maybe I can look it up, like do a Google search for ten minute waste of time. <laughs> uh, but the thing about that picture is yeah. that um, it, uh, it, I, I. I could uh, like I had the beard going on, yeah. but the mustache here, yeah, not so much. Real thin, and even my, so, my, you looked Amish then. Yes. Totally Amish. Wow. It's a total Amish beard. You could ra- yeah, you get suspenders rocking. on and you could raise yeah, yeah, yeah. a barn, churn butter. Time for the room springing. <laughs> that's right. Woo. You're not going to date my daughter. Yeah. yeah. No, that's it was cool. totally, it was totally, in fact, my friends, that's what my friends nicknamed me. <laughs> Amish. <laughs> it's like the Amish. It's like, what's with the Amish beard? It's like, Amish. oh, I don't know. I'm going to go churn some butter now. All right. You want me to make you some furniture? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so uh, there we are. Yeah. Making fun of the Amish people. Well, religion. you know. Chances are they're not watching anyway because they don't like technology. Good so, point. Yeah. But I think, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and yeah. we have no research on this, and this just came out of our heads. Where's our intern? I think there's new, like, Amish. I think there's internet Amish and stuff. Neo-Amish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I've been, I, 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 I'm sensing this thing. That is disturbing. Yeah, like smart. I mean, come on. You're over in like. Look, you're Amish. You're in the 21st century, yeah. right? And um, Jakob yeah. wants an iPhone, right? Am I right? Look, Jakob's like, I, I, I went into the city to sell some butter, and <laughs> I happened, I happened past the Apple oh, store <laughs> to sell some butter. To sell some butter at the Apple store, yeah. and I went in, and well. There was the keynote, uh, 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 and uh, Tim Cook, and uh, he showed me a watch. You can get phone calls on your watch. Like Dick Tracy. Can you believe? Like Dick Tracy. (laughs) But me and all the other Amish guys, like, who's Dick Tracy? I snick yeah. in a Dick Tracy comic in between my Bible. Right. My Bible. Bible. You know, so, yes. <laughs> so, you, you will find it in Revelations. Yeah. This is our show. We wow. Are, we yeah. are, make fun of ne- religions. I've never heard of that. Really. That is deeply, deeply disturbing in I the marrow so. of my soul, I, right? Well, I don't know. We're going to have to look that up. Neo-Amish. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, they've had, okay, so didn't they, they've had this rum yeah. springing, rum springing, or whatever, where yeah. where the kids, you know, when you kind of mature, your late teens or whatever, yeah. early whatever it is. It's like an Am- and, and is it an Amish bar mitzvah? It's like Amish Burning Man, basically. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go to next year's Amish Burning yeah. Man. What are they doing there? Well, I mean, I think I think that's the road. You you go out and you kind of go out in the world and see what the world of sin is like, right? Oh. And then. No, if that's you know, it. then you have your your faith, you know, your faith. Mm. I, should, I should just look it up, and then, yeah. and then you you know, I think the idea is you come on back to the com- community and churn butter. Mm-hmm. It, it's like um, it's like Amish pungvar, you know. It's like gotcha. this, uh, you know, it's a rite of passage. You know, you're just like, yeah, okay, this is not going to be good. But man, I wish my parents would have done that to me. Like, hey, go out into the world and sin. Well, dude, that. <laughs> For boy, you get out there and sin. For non-Amish people, that's yeah. called spring break. It's very true. Cue the Van Halen. Right. Woo! Right. <laughs> Beautiful girl. That's right. Her. Maybe throw in a little hot for teacher. Um, I have another surprise, but we don't. We we don't have it. I love it when you Google Rung Springer. The first hit is Rum Springer. The second is Rum Springer Band. Ooh. There's a to not be or not to be an Amish. Let's just look this up. Now we're gonna ha- we're gonna have help. There's a whole Wikipedia. Yeah. Just a preview. We're gonna have a little help Excellent. on the podcast. Excellent. Probably next time we're here. We decided to, I mean, we're packing it in. We got a lot to talk about. We got the Emmys to talk about. Oh, yeah. We've got some hard news to talk about too. Sure. But um uh so we do have a lot to talk about. And we do eventually talk about stuff. If you're Eventually. New, if you're new to this yeah. show. First we got to warm up to it, though. we got to coffee. 
Yeah. Other mm-hmm. other news shows. Right, but other news shows, right? The second mm-hmm. they go on, hi, this is Herb Finkelstein at the news desk. Bam! News is in your face. With us, you know, it's Monday. Yeah. We're gonna ease into it. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna jest a little bit. We're going to look, uh, look, 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 look. Yeah. Just just tell the folks the truth. Okay. We're two white middle aged chuckleheads who are riffing on Joe and Mika, basically. But which one are you? Correct. Are you Mika? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will be Mika. Why not? You know, she, she's uh, a she, she's a looker. I can do it. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. I, can't, I can't pull off Mika though. Yeah, I, I could probably pull off maybe the third wheel yeah, guy. But ugh, don't get Mika. me started on Hi, I'm Mika. Scarborough. We don't like people in the media, by the way. If you nah. again, so I uh, look um, when well, it, well, again. Just a I preview. Like yeah. Just a preview. We will. Maybe get some help with this in the future on the podcast. Excellent. I know some some good stuff. Yeah, some yeah. surprises. Excellent. Because what am I going to do for a week of not doing the show? Uh, Rome Springer, Rome Springer <laughs> uh, is a term of a rite mm. of passage during adolescence. It is punk far. Trans, yeah, translated in English as jumping, hopping around. Oh, that's. I knew that. Used in some Amish and Mennonite communities because Mennonite. I think I had some Mennonite. I think I actually had some, well, I had some Quaker and Mennonite mm-hmm, kind of, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I had relatives. Yeah. So I actually had, yeah. like at one point it's like, wait, were they Amish or something? Like I, we had like the, the, like great, great grandparents in the black. Oh, look, I'm wearing black clothes without any. Is there, a, <laughs> is there something you need to tell us? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> dude, we yeah. don't do the show for one week and you come back new Amish. Yeah, I what's know, going on right? with that? Well, it's not like I. What do I wear all the time? Black. There you go. See, right. I, to me, I think the, the Amish fashion statement of I mean, you look in my closet, dude, yeah. and it's like uh, black, black shirts. Black, 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 like black. I've got ten black T-shirts, right? Because I'm so unimaginative. Yeah. I don't care. It's like and black is the new black. You know. Black um, is the new black. Right, it's fashionable. Yeah, and and so 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 there. And then if I have black, so like, well, I'm okay. I'm wearing some blue jeans. I'm a little fancy today. You jumped over Johnny Cash straight to Amish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so if you look in the, my closet, it's black, 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 <laughs> Hawaiian shirt. Right, black, 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 black. You know, so there. That's for spring, right? Yeah. Black, 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 spring yeah. Hawaiian. Black, 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 black. Cargo shorts. Oh, okay. black, 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 black. Yeah. So that's pretty much my closet right there. That's right. That's right. So uh, <laughs> that's the next show the on Amish... Newsbox. Doc's closet. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would be yeah. <laughs> that would be. Uh, that would be like ooh. a little podcast side note, like uh, in. Um, when they have the young ones and they have like the oh. little uh, squirrel rodent thing, like yeah. it's the puppet, right? That would be Doc's closet. Like we'd be sitting here, and all of a sudden you'd see the little rat, like I'm in Doc's closet. We've got to shove the intern into the closet with a yeah. sock puppet. Here, yeah. <laughs> do the sock puppet. <laughs> yeah, sock puppet. Exactly. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Oh. And then uh, Lemmy in the Ace of Spades, Motorhead. Oh, Lemmy. Yeah. yeah. Then yeah. that would cut to that. Uh, the Amish. Okay, so uh, the Amish are a. S- subset of Anabaptist Christian movement. I didn't know, not know that. Uh, you know, and uh, so they intentionally, mm. if you don't, we're sitting here talking Amish. I, we assume you know what Amish is. Just yeah. according to Wikipedia, intentionally segregate themselves from other communities as part of their faith, right? Right. So don't wear... And the Quakers are like this too, I know. So you, you wear kind of black clothes. You don't wear fancy jewelry or anything because that's an affront to God. And nothing ost- you are in o- ostentatious to because, God. right. Because they also believe yes. that uh, individual ego is yes, bad. That's that, right. You know, we're, we are a community yeah. of friends. Much like other yeah. religions believe. Sure. Uh, for the Wenger Mennonites. Ooh, Wenger Mennonites. They must be Arsenal fans. Hi, I'm a Wenger. Uh, anyway, bump, bump, bump. One person got that joke. <laughs> uh, so I'm just trying to figure out. Oh, yeah. 16 to 21. Wrong string occurs between 16 to 21. The majority choose baptism. Okay. Uh, sorry. Trying to read in the morning here. Uh, the rum springer normally begins around the age of 14 to 16 and ends when a youth chooses baptism. That's what it is mm. within the Amish church or instead leaves the community. Wow. So there you go. Wow. You you figure it out. You either get dunked in water or you go out to sin. 
the majority mm. choose baptism and remain in the church. Not all Amish use this term. So there you go. So 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 yeah. So it's basically uh, go on spring break. Yeah. Come back. Decide. You know. Soiling your Amish oats. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Quaker oats. Quaker. Oh. oh. Quaker. Well, oh. anyway. No, it's an interesting religion. Neo-Amish. I think when we were growing up, yeah. you know, this was back when this show called 60 Minutes was relevant. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Of course, right now it's kind of relevant because all they do is interview ex uh, administration, administration folks, you know, it's like, hey, what what happened? Scaramucci, like ten yeah. minutes, and so you know. when did when did you yeah. know he was insane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, and the mooch, and then like, and then like, tell us who lost the election for you again? <laughs> right. right, that was last yeah. week's sixty yeah. minutes, which yeah. I haven't watched. Right. Oh no, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was. I'm thinking of uh, the PBS, whatever. Gotcha. <laughs> Apparently, Judy Wood- Woodruff was kind of given the stink eye, uh, so I've heard. Oh, I, yeah? I didn't watch it. Yeah. Someone gave Judy the stink eye. Well, no, no, no. She was given the stink oh, eye. Oh, okay. Really? Well, yeah. What about that Wisconsin thing again? You, is, uh, never mind. Right, right. Oh, we're not going to rehash that. This, this was a book out, we all know, that came out like two weeks ago. What happened? Yeah. Literally. Is that's that what the name it, of it. Is that what it's called? What happened? <laughs> yeah. What? It should have just been WTF <laughs> question mark. <laughs> right, and right yeah. Right. That. Well, and, and and the POTUS, mm-hmm. uh, again, back in true form, yeah. has done some tweets. Yeah. He, oh, gosh. He just. So so he tweeted something about the book, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I can pull it up here. Uh, something about the what happened. Uh, you know, I think he. I what think it said, happened? I think he said what happened. Right, the book, and he tweeted out the book, mm-hmm. and it was something like he said, "I happened" or something like that. Mm, the president mm, on Twitter. Mm. I mean, what is it with these people? And they're all these people are senior citizens. These yeah. people are getting the Grand Slam breakfast for ninety nine right. cents. Yeah, the moon, the, the, the president, uh, and moon over the my hand. Democratic candidate that lost. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they're both Grand Slam breakfast ninety nine cent candidates here. Registered AARP members. And it's like he's on Twitter yeah. like a teenager, yeah, doing like the the thing. So, and then the, Uh-oh. that gif thing where he like uh, swings a golf ball and it, <laughs> yeah. Three hours ago, happy seventieth birthday, CIA. <laughs> I, I I kid you not. I kid you not. With his with his weird, with a clip of his weird speech. I, I, I this is literally right. You can see it right here. I'll just pull that up okay. right there. There that's, he is. Uh, that's that's happy birthday CIA and remember that he famously gave that that weird right in front of yeah right in front of the wall of yeah the wall there is has stars which are the uh, the thing and he, I yeah. can't remember he said some stuff and of course you know the story is as we know and we follow politics we have a politics show we're not going to talk politics no. we got way no. more important things to talk about like the Emmys for example oh yeah. The no, em- well, that'll talk politics, too. The, em- the Emmys got spiced up, or should I say spicer yes, yeah. up? That's probably was the, the highlight. But, but, uh, but uh, um, yeah, he, he gave that speech in front of the wall, and it was kind of weird. But, it was but an famously, speech, the CIA, yeah. what we're yeah. told yeah. is that the CIA, the deep state, mm. is not on the side of the administration. I, ca- I call them Christians in action. That's right. CIA, yeah. But it's also, interestingly enough, CIA Mm -hmm. and, I didn't know about the CIA, but the Air Force is also 70 years old. That's that's right. Yeah. So there's another, so the second tweet is a speech in front of the Air Force. But, uh, let's Mm. see. I was just going to say, well, uh, God, do I show it? Do I actually show it? What's that? Uh, Well, the tweet of the weekend was... That one right there. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I'm not gonna. Okay, so the deal is, is yeah. he retweets some account called CNN sucks, which um, <sighs> probably you know here's here's yeah. folks when you retweet something, let me give you some Twitter advice. Excellent, I need it too. Yeah, yeah. When you go into Twitter, yeah, and you're gonna retweet someone, maybe even like something. Yeah, Ted Cruz. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ted, are you with us? Are you listening? What you need to do. Yeah. Is even though it's really cool, it's like, yeah, yeah, I really like that. I'm I'm all for it. Yeah. 
pull up their Twitter if you don't know them, if they're not a friend, and just kind of look through their stream, look through their description, right? You know, and kind of look through their feed and see if they're the kind of folks you would associate with, because you could retweet something that you sort of agree with, and then find out you retweeted some really. Yeah, you retweet. We, you know, you, you, re, you retweeted the son of Sam. Yeah, it so just you, don't want to you know de- deplorables something yeah. something. So anyway, dumb, so he he retweets the basket, CNN. It's a sucks, dumpster, and it's a, a famously. And I don't. I think this happened on the campaign trail. Yeah. There was a thing where, well, there were a couple incidents which I would say did not help the case of the candidate, yeah. where uh, Hillary Clinton fell. Like yes, fell, and one of them is she fell into getting up on the plane. Yeah, and, and then, you know, and people asked about they were concerned her about yes. her health, yeah. you know, which everyone's like, no, 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 no. Well, if you're falling around, you know, uh, people are not gonna like me saying that. But anyway, so so some guy made a GIF video of yeah. him golfing at the dive, driving range, and the golf ball hits yeah. her in the back, and she falls. It's, yeah. This is your president. And he's retweets tweeting, this. Yeah, that's just so presidential. And it's like, that's the thing. No. You know, people, I, I've heard people on the radio who, who actually, you know, maybe voted for or supported the guy and said, yeah, he's not a, like New York, like the New Yorkers, you know, some yeah. people, some people in New York hate him. Somebody, I had people, and even they're like, stop it. What are you doing? You yeah. know, what are you doing? Yeah. Why? Why? You're president. Go do, you know, whatever yeah. it is. Well, it's, it's under the old thing of usually that when you ascend to the presidency, you stop being a New Yorker well, of whatever state of you are, and you, you're the president. A bunch of, bunch of retweets. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway. Yeah. It's interesting to see the retweets because you go through there and you find out a lot of them have come through guys or who are guys or gals. I have no idea who they are, but yeah. kind of a shady sort of... Uh, well, that's what I say. You know, you, you look know. through the... the, yeah. the I don't know. But even then, it's, uh, that's bad form for the president, presidential. It's right. Just, it's just dumb. Right. Right. So, in, I mean, in the news, I don't know what's going on at the moment, but uh, UN, United Nations. It's UN week, yeah. And so, so he's going to give a speech. Yeah. To the UN. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they have him going up there. So that'll be interesting. Uh, and this is actually, you know, uh, I and I think this is Kelly's total move. I think this is Kelly's thing, because liter- see, when you say Kelly, yeah, the I, chief of I, staff, I know who you're John, talking yeah. about. But every time you say Kelly, you use a lot. I always think Kellyanne Conway, right? Yeah, this is Kellyanne Conway's thing. I know <laughs> it is. You know she's really running things from behind the scenes, right? She's the secret master. She's yes. the puppet master. She's the, yes, yes. She's, she's the, pulling strings, yes, man. Yes, the puppet master. No, but yeah, John Kelly, you can tell this has him kind of all over it because he's, he's a smart dude. So he's got Trump going up there making a speech, and then uh, and then the, literally the day after, I, I believe it's literally the day after, he's going to have Nikki Haley get up there and make her speech. So she, you know that she's going up there as cleanup. Yeah. Because something's yeah. going to pop, pop out of Trump's pie hole that's just way out there, and well, old Nikki's going to have to go in there and just, you know. Well, okay, so. so Everyone calm down. So in in the, first is like a teleprompter. Yeah. You read the teleprompter. But, you know, he th- this guy's famous for his speeches. And pretty much mm. all of his speeches are political rallies. For himself, they're pepper alleys, yeah. right? Yeah. Which during a campaign, by the way, works, works, yeah, and helped. And that was the thing that you know, the media covered this and that and all this. But what you really, if you watch C-SPAN or you saw the thing, you saw all these like middle America, like thousands of people showing up and going rah rah rah, wearing the hat, you know, eh, you know, yeah. all that stuff. Uh, but once you're president, you're you're like president for everybody, and yeah. you give speeches, yeah. Like, you know, Obama gave a good speech. Hence the term presidential. Yeah. You know. But, you know, he, he'll he come in and he'll start talking about, you know, like the United... I, he'll just come up with something. Like, I, what we should have a poll. Like, what what things will he, you know, at the United Nations, will, will he talk golf at Mar-a-Lago? Will he, oh, you know... I sense that there's a drinking game coming on. Yes, yes. What will he say oh, next? Pick a shot, on right? Fr- on oh. Wednesday. We don't want to do that course, Wednesday. We'll be, be tanked on the air. You know, we're just taking shots. Yeah. What's he going to say now, Clonk? When is yeah. he? I don't even know. I think it's Tuesday. He's is it making Tuesday? Yeah, it's I think not it's, today. It's either today or tomorrow. Yeah. I'm yeah. kind of foggy on it because so you'll on the have weekends. Material. 
Oh yeah, on the weekend. So it'll be interesting. I run away from politics on the weekend. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> it's football season, so I. I know. know. Uh, so, so I remember. So Obama gave. They all do. They come in and hi, I'm the president. Uh, <laughs> well, and then here's the problem. It's the yeah. back right now. The United Nations is very serious yeah. times. In yeah. The United Nations because yeah. it is the backdrop of this North Korea yep. stuff. And we keep telling, well, and I think rightly so. Uh, you know what, folks? I mean, if you if you if the United States is the leader, and if we're out there spending yeah. all the trillions of dollars that we're doing on all this boats and planes and satellites and stuff that we go around and police the world in, well, if we're going to do that, yeah. we probably should show up and go, hey, uh, folks, world. It's a North Korea thing. We need to we need to discuss this problem. Right. It's a problem. I mean, the guy's like doing nukes, nuke tests. He called him. Did you see the Trump tweet <laughs> yes, where he called I him actually, a rocket man? I did actually have that pulled up in uh, oh, geez. in the. Uh, Somebody's been listening to Elton John again. No, no, no. I actually. It's funny you said that because I actually did bring that up right there. There's there the tweet is. from uh, when was that? September seventeenth. That was what last. Yeah, Yesterday. four a.m. Four a.m. He was up and um, and the tweet. I spoke with President Moon of South Korea last night. Asked him how Rocket Man is doing. <laughs> Long gas lines forming in North Korea. Too bad. Well, I don't know. R- Rocket Man doesn't give you the yeah doesn't give you the confidence in a nuclear situation. Yeah, you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he took gravitas and and buried it out in the backyard. Yeah, uh, that's a little yeah. yeah. But but to solve this problem, we do need the United Nations. We do we need specifically Russia and China. Yeah, right. And so uh, and I know that that you know aside from POTUS over there, Nikki Haley's been presenting at the UN and saying yeah and giving interviews and going. We're we're kind of losing our patience. Yeah, you know, and I think yeah. I think hi China. Yeah, America calling. All right, I I think so. Love too. your products. We buy a lot of them. <laughs> right. We know we have issues. We know South Korea is kind of a thorn in your economic side, but you guys are doing well too. So let's talk about see, North Korea. See, you that's know. the problem about uh, yeah. trying. Tra- the only and it's not really it's more geopolitical rather than partisan. Mm-hmm. Political is uh, the one thing I will say about that is China's got to get over its. Uh, we can't have a unified Korea in 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 their well, know, yeah. sphere of influence because this is now coming to a yeah. head and yeah you know I mean they're, they're, big decisions gonna have to be made. You know what I I heard an analysis. I mean I, there there are you know and you can go out and seek out like people who are experts in mm. North Korea like there. Dennis yeah. Rodman? No, <laughs> maybe not Dennis Rodman. Well, under the Trump, Trump yeah. under the Trump administration, he probably is their North Korean yeah. specialty. Him and Jared sitting around a table. So, uh, yeah. what did Rocket Man say when you? Oh, yeah, I partied with him the other night. He did actually. I heard an interview about a week or so ago, uh, like two week or two weeks ago, with <laughs> Dennis Rodman. And you're just like, oh wow. You know, and he's kind of like, oh, it's cool. We play basketball. He likes basketball. Nice guy. It's like, uh. Nice guy. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if I'd call him nice guy, Dennis. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but what I, one of the analysis that I heard from someone who seemed like kind of an insider was the yeah. issue with China is if they, if they go shut that stuff down, if they, you know, topple the regime, you know, yeah. that typical thing, the, the Saddam kind of thing or the Muammar Gaddafi kind of thing where it's like you take them out, that they're worried that the North Koreans will just start flooding over the borders. They'll have yeah. like a, you know, like a Syria kind of a, you know. Refugee ref- Sudan yeah. sort of thing, yeah. And so that yeah. that, that that's kind of yeah. more so maybe the key to China's. I mean, it was, they always used it as a strategic thing yeah. during the cold war right they had that we had this you know right now it's a little more i think um even though it still is that way i mean we got taiwan they don't like that but still this is this is this is something new yeah i i agree and <laughs> and i have to sneeze and it's, it's just it's one of those I mean, real muddy things that the yeah. answer isn't isn't there's there's just a bunch of bad answers yeah. Not, well, nothing I, is you, you know. know and here's the thing <laughs> 
little sneezy. Uh, China, I mean, look, China, they, uh, China and Russia can't afford some guy going off, you know, doing. Oh, I'm doing nuclear test of the week and flying missiles all around uh, Japan and all that. That's too dangerous for even China. I mean, there is a yeah. balance there. It's in their best interest, you yeah. know. I mean, the Chinese don't want to. They'll survive, but they don't want to. You know, they. You know. Yeah. Enough I mean, is enough. Oh, so. uh, uh, anyway, I, I, I saw the little news thing over your shoulder. Uh, Trump did give a speech today. Oh, this morning he, he did gave, it happen. Gives gave his UN speech. Well, I yeah. have I have the news right here. <laughs> Should we see? We weren't. We weren't going to do. Uh, Let's we check weren't, it out. Well, CNN has full remarks. Oh. Uh, well, there is a video on YouTube. Huh. Well, he's just sitting there, though. I thought. Don't they? Don't they? Like. Well, this is. This is. Um, this is. This is Nikki Haley. Oh, here he is. Uh, should we? Yeah. Looks like he's reading off of something. <laughs> But he's sitting. He's sitting down. It's not like because uh, I remember the speeches like uh, W, and they're kind of like back in the. Yeah. The, maybe it's not the General Assembly. I don't know. I don't know. What is this here? And it was only for the reason that the United Nations was here that that turned out to be such a success. So, thank you. What is this? Okay, so this is a little of the, the speechy thing here. I actually saw great potential right across the street, to be honest with you. And it was only for the reason that the United Nations was here that that turned out to be such a successful project. Is he project. talking about a hotel? So yeah, he's talking about one of his he's hotels. He's talking about hotel, yeah. There you go. For your There's introduction and for your steadfast advocacy for American interests on the world stage. So this was... On behalf of the co-host countries, I would like to also cool. thank <laughs> Secretary General Guterres for... The and co host Country. It's sweet, sweet. For joining yeah. us, and we affirm our commitment right. to the United Nations reform, and reform okay. is what we're talking about. I applaud the Secretary General. All right, well, I mean, yeah. we could sit here and boy, we'll, we'll, we'll have to do our deep analysis. But do you think that's, that's or could, is there more speeches, or is this it? I don't know. I don't know. He, he couldn't help <laughs> talking about shilling for his uh, Some hotel, hotel across the street. Yeah. Well, the, there, that's the one where we, we were thinking. Oh, we, that's right. in the drinking game, right? Right. Well, that's always a key. <laughs> there's, always, there's always a project. There's always a hotel or a golf course or something. Yeah. Or wine or steak or that whatever. That pushing, the, right? It's always yeah. like part of the thing. I mean, it was... Admittedly, it was kind of comical during the campaign. Yeah. But it's a little bit weird. Yeah. Well, it's not a little bit weird. Yeah, we've It's weird. We haven't even started the drinking game yet, and I'm already behind in it. I know. Holy, yeah. holy cow. I'm going to be a well, full fledged lush shoot. by the time this is over. So, yeah. So, politics. There's your politic update. We'll, we'll, we'll have to find out. We'll read the remarks. Go read them right. yourself. I mean... Yeah. See, other news. Uh, Iran. I don't know. Uh, the Iranians made a uh, uh, little uh, yeah. blurb about how uh, if uh, Trump revokes the nuke deal, that there's going to be big, big trouble in in Iran. Yeah, that's the other. That's the other. So piece. great. Now we got to deal with those. You know. Yeah. That's the other piece to it too. Is like yeah. now this is the Iran thing, right? And they're they're kind of they they they're kind of hang out with the mm -hmm. Rocket Man mm -hmm. too. So I don't. And while we were gone, Rocket Man. Well, while we were gone, they he had launched a one of his um, missile things. Yeah, over Japan. Yeah, this time way deep into the uh, <sighs> uh, Sea of Japan. There, we're all gonna die. <laughs> That's right. Game over, man. Game over. Uh, so yeah. So, <sighs> but you know what hit me That's the hardest the this weekend? Is as weird as it sounds. The thing that hit me the hardest this weekend was uh, HDS. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, so we had some news. So let's 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 steer it on into entertainment news. Yes. And I've got some great stuff here. Um, I was going to put together a little montage, but then I Ooh. then I did something else, and I ran out of time. <laughs> it's stuff, more easy that way. Stuff but happens, I do yeah. have interesting things here. So Excellent. the. <laughs> So, yeah, so let's talk about the b bad news to good news. I don't know how to do this, but mm. um, Harry Dean Stanton, not long after 
I had posted a funny meme, a yeah. Twin Peaks meme on Facebook. Yeah. I think it was, I think it was the same day. I think it was hours later Harry Dean Stanton actually had died. Karnak made another appearance uh, again, in a, inadvertently. I know. I mean, it was a meme for the, the Twin Peaks. It was his character in Twin Peaks. Yeah. Because he, in the new season, he, he actually sits down and has a little musical interlude in Twin Peaks season three. Go watch it. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a great scene. Is Harry Dean Stanton sitting there in the trailer park playing the guitar, singing uh, Red River Valley when it says it's on. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. And apparently he hasn't you can go by, he has an album out where he's playing all these this music and, and supposedly wow. and people are like, It's really good. Wow. Like I gotta get this one. Yeah. I, I know I know someone who will hook me up with it. Nice. Her name would be Betty. Ah <laughs> well, Betty always has the latest she's got the latest, you know, because she's Records she's, and music. She's and, got her ear to the. Yeah, yeah. she'll she'll have it. Gotcha. She'll, she'll yeah, and she'll be back. So we'll we'll get that. But anyway, Thanks. um, yeah. So apparently, I've read some reviews, and it's like it's like this is the only album you need this year. You know, wow. Harry Dean Stanton's actual music album. So he plays this thing in Twin Peaks. So I made a little funny meme with an album of. His character Carl Rod and right. Did you see that? I have not seen it yet. I'm. Uh, <sighs> I thought see, I sent I'm getting it to behind. You. I'm getting behind the eight ball. Now I'm on this kick about Mulholland Drive. Well, I might. I get a, Yeah, that's a good one. You know, they're all weird though. You know, but that's okay. I thought I sent it to you. You know what? Um, I what, find the it. meme. Yeah, you sent it to me. Oh, did I? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So yeah. I could just pull it up in your thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good one. It got it got good likes. <laughs> Not like the one that I'm getting right now, though. <laughs> right. I'm memeing. I'm memeing the masters. I'm telling you, you are a memer. Yeah, I am. So what? I, I'm just gonna pull it up because it was very weird. Here it is, right here. Finally. Oh um, yeah. You're gonna have to change your name to Doc Meme. Uh, it's it's mm? it's it's almost happening, folks. I'm telling you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This was this was the meme. The meme. This there we go. Posted in the uh, in a Twin Peaks group. Yeah. There. How many likes did he get? Oh, 74. And it, he plays the character of Carl Rod, and that's him playing the guitar there. I go, Car- this is the, the album you could get the Carl Rod, America's Grandpa Songs of Compassion, <laughs> featuring 9 30 a.m., never before. Uh, a cup of good morning, America. More shit than I gotta do. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, uh, you've been selling your blood again. I've already gone places. <laughs> Selling your blood. Here, again. kitty, kitty, kitty. Oh. That reference. Mm-hmm. And Wicked Game. <laughs> Wicked Game. Oh, Chris Isaac. Live from the Fat Trout trailer park. Yeah. Yes, a few po- a few folks. Uh, one one comment was, someone said, uh, "You uh, you got me at here, kitty, kitty." But Wicked Game like, yeah, bowled me over. A few people got the references in there. There you go. So anyway, deep memes, deep memes, deep memes. Um, <laughs> I should just since we're talking about me, I yeah. I know it's horrible. Where am I at here? I have a meme on that group. Oh, for Pete's sakes! Five hundred and eleven likes so far. Nice. Yeah, if I if I could just get a thousand. You yeah. know, the last time I got over several thousand, I have to look it up. It was that Eclipse video live. Yes. That thing got like thousands of views mm-hmm. and thousands and thousands of views and likes. So, yeah. But no, no, none of my memes. So here's how the memes work on Facebook algorithm, right? Which algorithms in the news? Russians campaign algorithms. There's a lot of Russian news, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the way these things work is. Um, yeah, there's like bots and little fake accounts and stuff. So when you somebody just posts like a a meme that's all right, that's funny, and it's at like two thousand likes and stuff, yeah. and people are like copying each other on it and everything. And you look at the meme, it's like it's not that. It trust me, it's it's some manipulation there's there. A, there's an algorithm to that. Yeah, and yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't employ those algorithms yeah so if i get that many likes it's fairly it's legit it's organic yeah it's like there's people actually behind there i can see actual people who actually have facebook pages that are liking because um Mm -hmm. folks there's a thing if if you see 
this happens on Twitter too. If you see this huge amount, like it's almost impossible for something like that to spread so quickly. Yeah. And that's usually a, a sign of. A, yeah. Yeah. And everybody yeah. employs it, like your marketing people political campaigns and whatnot so so you can you can kind of see it there you go you know anyway mm -hmm. so nonetheless i'm getting lots of lag this is going to be like the biggest one lots of likes. but you have to you have to be yeah. it's twin peaks it's a deep meme you have to like watch season three and to get it anyway so but sarah dean stan yeah. hds yeah um yeah so harry dean Stanton. yeah uh so i posted that meme and i think it was that same day that all of a sudden it's like oh and, and actually in the comments i then posted his mm -hmm. oh my gosh you know because i saw that uh, david lynch responds and whatnot he was uh, 91 i want to say he was, was yeah so i think that was it uh everyone just came out and just said look i mean he's really one of america's great great actors character actor yeah and then you read the biography you read the stuff yeah, he was Malkovich before there was a Malkovich. Oh, yeah. You know? Well, uh, let's see here. I've got a few little bits that we can look at here. Can't of course, he's known for some big starring role, but, mm -hmm. but, Jason, mm. we forget. Like, mm -hmm. I, and I totally, I started reading the his, you know, obituary. Yeah. How can I forget? How can I forget? Oh, look at that. And the Ten to one shot, you said. Ten to one shot, he would take the fifth, and I lose. I hope we don't get... You sound like my bookie. How that monkey my life. I'll just get a good night's sleep. Yeah, good night's sleep. He plays the It'll FBI agent. Good day agent. tomorrow. Yep. In the Godfather new Part 2. New shirt, new tie. I'm going to shave you myself in the morning. <laughs> okay. I think that's a great line right there. I'm going to shave you myself, myself in the morning. So so in the in the Godfather Part 2, he's got this bit role yeah. where he's one of the FBI agents in the safe house. It's like Clemenza, right? No, it's Frank Patang, Patang, Patang. I can't say that. I can't say it in the morning. Is that, is that the on character Monday or the actor? Frank Pentangle. No, it's the character. Yeah. Frank's the guy who goes testifies in right, front right, of right, Congress. Right, 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 right. And if you haven't seen The Godfather, Godfather yeah. Part Two, it's time. Right. Because uh, it's all kind of based, the uh, they wrote it, you know, kind of based in the actual headlines of yeah. the mafia in the 60s and the Senate hearings and, right. you know. And so they basically, the government kind of, I mean, it's the witness press. It's like, okay, Frank, <laughs> you put away, we'll take care of you. You got to testify against the Corleone family. You know? Right, yeah. And it's a great scene. And so so Harry Dean, so they're, you know, they're, they're playing get, cards. They're in the safe house getting ready to go testify and smoking cigars. And did Harry he get Dean's a t-shirt like, that says, I was shaved by Harry Dean Stan? <laughs> that was such a weird... That's such a weird. Well, I mean, you I'm know, gonna like, shave you myself. Yeah. Okay. I I know, and I totally forgot. And when I when I was like, yeah, I was like, Harry Dean Stanton in The Godfather Part Two, and it was like, there it was. It was like, oh hell, yeah, he's the FBI agent, yeah, Garden Frank. Right. Uh, I'm not gonna play all these. Uh, the Green Mile. Yes. He's in the fantastic. Yeah. Scene Tom in Hanks. the Green Mile. Oh, the All Star Cast. You know, I haven't really. I think I watched the Green Mile. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna play play these all, right. but but I think I watched the Green Mile. Maybe I fell asleep, or I watched part of it, or whatever. So I've never actually really seen the whole thing. And I'm watching this scene, and I'm like, I gotta sit down and see this. Yeah. Movie. Michael Duncan Clark, Tom Everyone. Hanks. Everyone. Yeah. There's like an all star cast. Yeah. And here's yeah. Harry Dean Stanton. And what the scene that they have, if you go look it up on YouTube. Is there going through the practice of the routine of the electric chair because yeah. they're all on death row? And so Harry Dean Stanton is doing the dry run, so to speak, to practice. And the dialogue that he has mm -hmm. um, is amazing. I mean, the guy's a really a good actor. Really good actor, yeah. How about this one? This one will blow you away. I'm going to find it here to the exact, the exact part. Just give me a second. Give me a second. Here we go. I think this will work here. This is the other one that I was like, oh, really? I don't, I don't yeah. remember. It's been so long since I've seen this this one. How about a little Cool Hand Luke? 
Days of toil that's near. And this is Harry Dean's hand singing, like, what is this, 69 or whatever? Yep. So, dear Lord, who cares? Giant close up. Just a closer walk with the. Yeah. Yeah. Giant close up there. But that's Harry Dean standing in. You get a close up cool of his lips. hand Luke. Yes. Yeah. Starring Paul Newman, of course, one of Paul Newman's big, big things. I haven't seen that one in years. Oh my gosh, Harry Dean Stanton's fingerprints are all over some of the best cinema of the of the late twentieth century. Well, he was just an actor, yeah. actor's kind of actor. Yeah, you know, he kind of just did this 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 acting. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, you know, one of my favorites. So, well, this is a little scary. <laughs> It was actually before that, but uh, yeah, the scene in Alien, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, he's he's great in Alien. Here's here's what makes a great actor, and I was looking up some stuff. If you look up his dialogue, like you know, you go up to IMDb, you can get all the great quotes from from the movies and stuff. Right. Yeah. Most of Harry Dean Stanton's all of his acting in that movie Alien is pretty much him just going right. Right. Like, Yafet Koto's going off going, we need more money and everything. It's like, right? Right. I mean, that's pretty much yeah. his lines. That's awesome. And and it's, yeah. And he, and he pulls it off. And that's what a, a great, <laughs> great actor does. Yeah. You know? um, so, yeah, we, I mean, we, we saw him in, in Alien. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, one of his big, I think this was one of his big breakout, breakout bits. It's going to be interesting to see how they... I don't think we'll get dinged, but you know, as long as we don't oh, play yeah. the CBS stuff. But um, so how much do I get paid? Twenty-five bucks a car. Emilio Estevez. Hey, you don't get paid. Are you kidding? You work on commission. That's better than being paid. So this is Emilio Estevez and. Most cars you rip are worth two or three hundred dollars. Harry Dean Stanton in the right. great film, fantastic right. film, Repo Man. Right. Yeah. And you know Good the, stuff. The thing is, I'm going through these going, God, I haven't seen Repo Man in years and all that. And so now it's like, you know, when someone like that who's really a good, great actor dies and you're like, mm. and you're like, uh, you know, I need to go rewatch that now. Right. Because you're watching it. And then there was uh, there was a, a Paris, Texas. That's right. Uh, Wim Wenders, the German director. Uh, he, <laughs> Harry Dean Stanton. And Dean Stockwell together. Oh wow, yeah. I mean, how how good is that? I, you know, I mean, that's and I I think that was a Sam Shepard a Sam Shepard uh, uh, script. Make you leave? I'm not trying to get rid of you, Travis. No, no. Well, what good is that? There's Dean do? Stockwell. Oh, well, and, that's not going to solve anything. And uh, all right, I'm going to find Jane. Yeah, I mean, that's just right. like I know we're just like putting this up here, but we're also like you know how they are with the. Well, we're playing homage. The copyright and all yeah. that stuff. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's like that That one. I'm pretty sure Sam Shepard wrote that one. I think. Mm. I think. I know. We have people in the theater thing that are screaming right now. Um, yeah, Sam Shepard comes right up. Paris, Texas screen. There play. you go. Right on the Google. Directed Damn. by Wynn Wenders. Starring Harry Dean Satin and, and Dean Stockwell. There we go. And I, I can't remember the other people in it. That's that's kind of like a heavyweight kind of movie. Yeah. Like if you're into cinema. Yep. So, uh, yeah. So you can put these all on the list. Yeah. I mean, and I know people were like just dialing up Alien to watch it just to, to see. And there's there's others, yeah. but uh, but man. Now, here's an interesting thing. Wedding. Finds a talent. One thing. Did you know about mm -hmm. this? He was his best friend, uh, Jack Nicholson. That's right. What yeah. about that? And yeah. here he is uh, back in 1994 at a Nicholson tribute. Yes. And we got to be good friends. He was funny. I was, he got married, and I was the best man at his wedding. This is funny. Honor. And at his divorce. <laughs> He's the best man in his... <laughs> Called me, he was living with a friend of his, and said, Harry, can I come over here? Put me up for a few days. And yeah. The dogs over here have eaten the curtains halfway up the wall. I mean, this is this <laughs> classic, yeah, classic Harry yeah. Dean Stanton. And they end this, they end this. Oh, yeah. They end this thing. I sent this to you, right? Yeah, That's why. yeah. 
They end this with Harry. Well, all right. I don't play the whole thing. They end this thing on YouTube with uh, he, he they they. So is this a little tribute? It's one well, of those Hollywood yeah. tributes to Jack Nicholson kind of thing. Almost a roast, sort of. A, he, almost you know. kind of the roast. It's more like the um, uh, AFI, kind of a little more highbrow. This is your life. Yeah. Yeah. And so they end this with uh, Harry Dean Stanton and Art Garfunkel singing Dream. The Everly Brothers. By the yeah. Everly Brothers. It was pretty good. I mean. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, again, he was Stanton, a musician. Stanton and Garfunkel. Yeah, you know, it says uh, you know. So I mean, he's like, yeah, yeah, it, 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 and he talks about how it's like, yeah, Jack gets divorced, and oh, I'm sorry, <sighs> Jack gets divorced, yeah. and, and so he moves in with Harry Dean Stanton for two years, and then he talks about how he got the Easy Rider role. And he's like, I should have got that, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. then uh, then uh, Jack casts him in. Uh, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but you know, his career kind of starts taking off all of that, you know. So right, yeah. I did, uh, you know, I didn't know that. I didn't know that the two, I mean, Jack Nicholson, Harry Dean Stanton, that's pretty good. I'd like to hang out with those two, just sit around and just, yeah. just talk and whatever. Well, Nicholson's always got that, you know, uh, you yeah. know it's like, have you ever, take it to just Jack Nicholson, yeah. have you ever seen Little Shop of Horrors? Of course. Not the musical. No, the movie. With the Rick, Rick Moranis. Moranis, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Not that one. Good. Good musical. With Steve actually. Martin is the Great. dentist. Steve Martin is the dentist. Good musical film and good musical stage show, Little right. Shop Horrors. Mm-hmm. Highly recommend it. Great, great one. But the actual movie that it's based on, the B movie, with yeah. Jack Nicholson in one of his earliest roles. Mm. He actually goes to the dentist. He's He's a patient at the dentist it's like this young jack nicholson and he still has that hairline too right it, it, it's weird because you're just like it, it's as if you know you watch it and you go it's jack nicholson as if they cgi'd his face like yeah 30 years younger there it's, he is it's just very yeah. weird you know yeah that, for me favorite jack nicholson movie of all time it has to be i know i'm, I'm a weird like that but it's chinatown yes 19, oh my 1974 gosh. you know yes it, yeah Chinatown's a good I, one. I dig it. Yeah. Uh, directed by Roman Polanski. What movie was it? Was it I, I'm tempted to say it was a John Hughes film. And some, mm. s- someone's going to have to do a research. No, he plays, one, plays uh, like the father. Yes. I. You know what? Thanks for mentioning that because I did yeah. miss. I was going to pull that clip up and I missed it. Pretty in pink. He's Molly Ringwald's father. There you go. I'm sorry. Bam. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Cause yeah. People probably are screaming at, in right pink. now. Yeah, because I was sitting there last Why night. Isn't this after I game? after I watched uh, Stanton and Garfunkel, mm-hmm. I said to myself, I, I was like, I'm missing something. He was in something. What what is it? What is it? What is it? And finally, occurred to me. I think it was a Hughes film. Uh, Pretty in pink. There. Yeah, you go. it was. Sorry, I'm just the back because the, the backup went down. The things. No, I'm just trying to hit a camera shot here. And yeah. no, just just doesn't want to respond. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to put the camera on you. Yeah, it's okay. And uh well, okay. I'm about ready to Yeah. This is what <laughs> happens when uh let's try this again, folks, shall we? Oh, yeah, ooh, look. And hey, there I, we are. I just had to do a reboot. This is this is why I don't do this on my personal phone. Yeah. Yeah. When I do this show. That's why I have a Pad. How, how, are I do it in, on? how are things in Digiland? <laughs> that's, that's pretty much your blue screen right there. Yeah. I think it's bricked. I didn't install, yeah. I didn't do anything. It probably, you know what, Android has this annoying, Google, listen, mm-hmm. has this annoying auto update thing. Yes. Like, I, I turned mine have, off. I turned mine off. I couldn't handle it. it I thing can't. Just, it, it gets me going. I can't. Yeah. I, uh, I, you, Mr. Tech Guy may need a tutorial on how to turn that off because my my stuff auto updates. They're like yeah, you got to go into the settings and, and I pretty yeah. much do that. Of course, I yeah. realized that good old phone company changed my settings when they did one of the updates. Yeah, and all of a sudden I'm using more data than I'm supposed to be. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's a little bit. Class action lawsuit, folks. That's, that is one of the reasons why I got rid of that. Why I set it to non auto yeah. update because it was. Well, it was, no, I mean, I, I, I don't. It was getting to me. I can't. I, uh, they, I, they don't. Yeah. Allow it, and I have to hack it. And then when you hack it, then yeah. your phone works or doesn't work or whatever. A- Apple doesn't allow it. 
No, this is one of the Android. Oh, okay, yeah. I can. Actually, Apple does. Apple. Yeah. If you're talking iPhone, yeah, you I, can actually postpone the updates. Yeah, I can. I can show you later. Yeah. It's 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 fairly easy. Well, actually. see, every build of Android is different, so. And I have the phone company's build. But it's just sort of like, well, I've been in it. Okay, it comes up and it says, remind me later. One time, famously, yeah. I was out doing an event. And the phone's like, you're going to update. And I'm on the cellular network. And I'm like, do it later when we got time. It starts updating. Like a time when maybe I needed to use the phone. Again, this is the forced <laughs> updates Yeah. when you're actually doing something critical and important. It's always when you're really yeah. hip deep in something yeah. that it acts up. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, I've seen people do yeah. the live streaming and they're all of a sudden their window starts updating or whatever. It's like, now that I know how to turn off and I, and I do. Right, yeah. Uh, oh, here we're talking tech. That's right. Tech talk. Anyway. Tech talk. See, I always wanted to do a show called Tech Talk with Doc. Yeah, well, we it just kind of one. It just kind of rolls off, you know, in Tech Talk with Doc. Dun, 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 so, dun. Speaking of the Emmys, yeah, because the Emmys were last night. Back to entertainment, yeah. Jane Fonda, Jane yeah. Fonda was there, yeah. You know, she's and she mentioned in this this interview, she's a, she's about to turn eighty. She's seventy nine years old, about to turn eighty. Yeah, she it looks like she's had done a little. Uh, yeah, well, she did the exercise and stuff. I mean, she's she's looking good for eighty yeah, though. Yeah, come on. Well, I was just, Must be the Fonda jeans, man. Yeah, no, I mean it was like you know she's she's a, they they did a reunion because she's they mm. they have this show which I haven't watched on Netflix yet. It's in my list to watch. Her and Lily Tomlin and the yes the Frankie or something, right? Something Frankie. Yeah, something yeah. Frankie and Johnny. Something I don't, know. I don't know. I think that was a movie. But actually. anyway, yes. But <laughs> yeah. So you know, yeah. Jane Fonda was like no. You know, but she's turning eighty, so that's you know, eighty's the new forty-five or something. Sure. I don't know. Sure, whatever. Sure. So the Emmys were last night. Yeah. Um, I looked it up to see what was going on. Mm-hmm. I really didn't care because my favorite show and shows were not for the Emmys. So the big, the big yeah. thing about the Emmys is, I remember the Emmys are they're kind of like TV, like real. TV, yeah, not streaming. They're still trying to get all the streaming together, right? You right. know, streaming bits, and so, um, so the Twin Peaks show was not up for any Emmys because of the time they showed it. And there's something where yeah. at the cutoff date they have to show over half the episodes or something. Mm-hmm. And this also applies for the last season of Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. So both Game of Thrones and Twin Peaks, nice which potentially year. could have cleaned up yeah. the Emmys, were not part of this year's Emmys. They're next year's So they'll be up. next yeah. year. Yeah. And everybody will forget about it. <laughs> oh, you know? yeah, that's right. There was... Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Westworld... Yes. ...was a show that was in the Emmys. Mm-hmm. And it totally lost... It totally lost. Well, I mean, yeah. it's, I have the. I, I I did pull up the. Uh, I did pull up the uh, the whole. I pulled up the entire list. L.A. Times, Los Angeles Times, down Excellent. there in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, and I think Westworld. Uh, West uh, makeup. This is the kind of stuff. Makeup for a single camera series, non prosthetic. Winner, Westworld, you know. Uh, so it's yeah. like all those, they call them the creative yes. things, which is what the Academy Awards call the technical awards. You know, the ones that they don't show on TV. Editing and... Well, yeah, I think editing sometimes is... But we're talking about, you know, the award for the best guy holding the cable during the <laughs> thing, you know. Yeah. Best catering for a show. Ooh. I don't know. Um, so they, they, the, so there's a whole slew of awards that yeah. uh, they won. Stranger Things yeah. was up and won a bunch of these original main title theme mm-hmm. music. Stranger Things, yep. uh, Big Little Lies won some stuff. But I mean, uh, short form variety series. Well, that was The Daily Show, and it was hosted by Colbert. Right. Um, did he just hand it to himself? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, thank you. I didn't watch it. I just watched the highlights. 
So I mean, there's all these things, but like you know, like like West, like the actors, none of the actors Westworld won. Yeah, and they've got a good cast. Yeah. So here's what really won: Saturday Night Live. Yes, like Saturday Night Live. Baldwin, pretty much like, yeah, Alec Baldwin won for best. What is it? Emmy for for is it Donald Trump portrayal? Right. Yeah. What I uh, what is it called? I have to look at the Los Angeles Times. You know, so it was like that um, for comedy. For comedy, it, you know, pretty much to me, the Emmys were Saturday Night Live and uh, that Veep show. They I like all that like show. that Veep, Veep show. See, I don't I like, watch. I, like I, Veep. I, just, I just don't. It's interesting. Well, she won for the Veep show. Uh, anyway, Hand, Handmaid's Tale. Now, I haven't watched this. I've not. Yeah. Uh, best drama series was Handmaid's Tale. That cleaned up. And uh, is it Elizabeth Moss? Uh, the gal from Mad Men who stars in the... She won Best okay. best uh, yeah. Female okay. Actor. Um, which I think is right. She's, she's great. I like, yeah. I'm like. i a big fan of, of hers. Mm -hmm. uh, comedy, comedy series was Veep. See? Yeah. Yeah. So drama series, comedy series. Oh, the ladies in the dresses. Um, limited series, This Big Little Lies. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Well, I kind of... You know, it, it stars... It stars... Uh, Nicole Kidman, okay. Reese Witherspoon, wow. and Laura Dern. Wow, that's, that's a trifecta. That's pretty heavy weight. So I, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't like, but it, it's like it's uh, a trifecta. Yeah, it was like, well, I might need to watch it. And it's got to be huge budget. Laura Dern, of course, is in Twin Peaks. She won the Emmy for her role in This Big Little Lie. So Laura Dern actually walked away with an Emmy. I think it was her first. She's yeah. been nominated. She's been nominated for Academy Awards and stuff, but I think this was her first Emmy. So she won an Emmy for her role wow. in that one. Yeah. But I was like, wow, those three are in it? I mean, I'm, I, they're, they're great. Yeah. I mean, Laura Dern, fantastic. She's oh, yeah. great in Twin Peaks. But she's always been great. Uh, uh, Reese Witherspoon mm -hmm. is really, she's wonderful. And she did you know? that wild and kicked it up a notch. <laughs> yeah, the wild, which I still, I kind of still have to watch, which... Which is, I, I know it's it. bad. No, it's, I, and I, I heard even, it's good. <laughs> we even did a thing, we did this thing, production thing, and it involved Cheryl Strait and everything, who wrote Wild, and it's great, and everything, and Cheryl Strait's great, and I still gotta watch it because it's, it's a good movie. Mm -hmm. And Nicole Kidman. Oh, yeah, yeah. And let me tell you, if you don't, if you're not familiar with Nicole Kidman, there's two movies. One's a Gus Van Zandt movie, and I can't, I can't remember what, um, it's about a murder. I mm -hmm. can't remember the name of it. Okay. Mm. I have to look it up. I'll mm -hmm. look it up. And Stanley Kubrick's last film, Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah. With her then husband at the time, Tom Cruise. Mr. I know. Mr. Cruise. Tom and, but it was Stanley Kubrick. No, it was. She, it was, she did a good role in that. Oh, she man. Was good. She was like, yeah. she stole that movie. She carried the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it was. It was. I mean, Cruz did all right, but uh, he was cast well. He was cast well, but she was. You know? She. Uh, uh, she. She carried the movie. I thought at least she was the. Drive, yeah. Driving. Yeah. The there's climate. just scenes in that, and you know, working yeah. for Stanley Kubrick. So, okay. Nicole Kidman is a, a fantastic. Uh, I was just trying to. I want to know. Uh, sorry. So we're so prepared here on a Monday. Uh, Ninety four. Uh, oh yeah, she's like in all these movies. Oh sure, Sam Neill, Far and Away, um, uh, Gus Van Zandt, To Die For. Yeah, there you go. And that was a Gus Van Zandt there you go. film. I think that was a movie he made somewhere after My Own Private Idaho or whatever, and and it was uh, Hollywood. But it's it's a good one. Yeah, it's a definitely a good one. What was that movie that was kind of a musical she did as the French Moulin Rouge? Oh, was she in that? Yeah, she, she wow. played she played one of the lead roles. Yeah, she was a, yeah. She was a, a, a singer in the ca in the cabaret. Oh, yeah. yeah I just remember Moulin Ewan McGregor, Rouge. who, by the way, Ewan McGregor, big fan of Ewan McGregor. Yeah, it's a little really big good. fish. Big fish, big fish. Oh yeah. man, so many, so many. Uh, yeah, but to die for. And I just got confirmation. To Die For, to yeah. die for was a great movie. Yes, yeah. it was. And it was Gus Van Zandt. I mean, Gus Gus makes some decent movies. And he's from Portland. Yes. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, so I think what... So what else did we have here in the Emmys? 
Oh, uh, I'm just saying, so Big Little Lies with the three of them. So now I got to catch that too. I don't yeah. know where it's on. Here was the Dark Horse winner that I got behind because I okay. like this show. And I, you know, I was looking through this and I'm like, okay, yeah, Veep and all that stuff. And it's nothing against Veep. You watch Veep, you, you like that show. It's a comedy, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And it's uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus. Yep. Yeah. I like her. It's just kind of, uh, it reminds me a lot of. Uh, the the political bent of Arrested Development, just kind of quirky, oh, yeah. quirky cool. characters, sort of you know, uh, that that sort of thing. So I, I I dig it. Yeah, I dig it. Well, if it's Arrested Development, I mean, it kind of reminds me of that because like it, it's one of those ensemble casts, mm-hmm. and all their characters are really idiosyncratic and uh, kind of offbeat characters, and I, I dig that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I don't mind Veep. Veep's, Veep's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, she was a um you know the the thing I she was a second cityer. You know. She Dreyfus? was one of yeah. Was she? Yeah, that's what she like wow. Saturday Night Live and Yeah, I, um, I knew, yeah. I knew she'd done a lot of Oh uh, yeah. Before uh, Seinfeld. Yeah. She was like a the, the you well, know she did a little Saturday Night Live for a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well second that's usually where they second city. The second right. city the comedy. Gr- either second city or with yeah. the groundlings or something. Yeah. Because yeah. I used to, uh, before Seinfeld, I was always like, oh, yeah, because c- comedy, sketch comedy. Right. So we used to watch her. So right. what was this one? TV, they they have weird categories. I mean, if you think the Academy Awards is weird, look at the Emmys, right? Mm. Which, by the way, I have a new idea. Yeah. I think next year we got to go for an Emmy. I don't know how we'll do it. We're on the internet. But we'll we, figure out a way. Oh, I was going to say we should have our own our, our own award show called The Crummies. Ooh. We, well, you know what? That's a good idea because we're going to have – we got lots of ideas. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so there's this category called TV movie. Okay. Which makes no sense. Here's the thing. The the categories, if you read the categories, you're like, uh, and and you can TV tell. Movie? Look, Emmys were from TV, television. Yeah. So, and they split it up, right? Because there's the daytime Emmys, which are mm-hmm. basically the soap, soap operas. operas uh-huh. or, and then and these talk are, shows. These are the night, but, it, daytime talk shows. Yeah, and yeah. then these are like the nighttime Emmys, right? Primetime. But yeah. this was all stuff you'd watch on television. It co- comes from television. Now you have streaming. People watch the TV shows. Stranger Things is Netflix. Yeah. You know, a lot of this stuff is on Netflix. And you can still, they're still trying to figure out. Anything. Like, it's now turned into this really amorphous sort of. A- a- yeah. Anything besides m- standard cinema movies. Well, so then there's this category called that. TV movie. Yeah. Well, and there's some excuse of those. me, and um, there's been a lot of those. And limited, oh, limited series. The Big Little Lies won limited series, okay. and Fargo was a part of that. Hmm. And there's this feud, Bet and Joan, which actually I do want to watch. Okay. Um. So TV movie. Dolly Parton's Christmas of Many Colors, Circle of Love, mm-hmm. The Immortal Life of Henry and Alex, Sherlock. The li- so then we Sherlock, have an yeah. actual like BBC production of an episode of Sherlock, The Lying Detective. Yeah. Right? And and then some, The Wizard of Lies. I don't know what that... Well, the winner was Black Mirror. San yes. Yunipara. Yun- I don't know how to pronounce it. Which, by the way, mm-hmm. great. But Black Mirror is an episodic show from the UK and it's on Netflix and it's very good I highly recommend yeah, it yeah you've I, watched, you've watched I've seen a couple and it's one of those shows where I was like I, I, I love it yeah but I've got so much else in the queue I know that I can't have, I'm gonna have to come back but, to it but I dig it when you really I get, dig it well and so I, I need to give it its own uh, amount of uh, attention yeah but the good thing about Black Mirror is it's a I, what would we call it an anthology so it's not a series. So it's, it's a standalone. Yeah, so each episode... is different. I call it basically a 21st century Twilight, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. with a little bit different twist about twist it, technology but... and society. Yeah. And I think this was one of the first... Well, no, the first Black Mirror episode I watched was the the first episode, which is infamous. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't want to go into it, because there was actually even some prime minister stuff in the news that later it was kind of like doc karnak it was like yeah. oh those black beer guys are very interesting aren't they yeah yeah um yeah. there was a lot of subplot yeah of the bestiality nature uh, yeah. ish yeah. i know right it's monday morning it's people don't know this. we're throwing that at them but this was yeah. i think the second one i watched yeah 
the scent and and it stars uh it's the the other lady um i got her name but it stars one of my favorites Mackenzie phillips oh yeah canadian yeah. she's in this and the other started lady on one day at a time right Mackenzie phillips no 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 that's a different one am i thinking what am i thinking McKenzie. Well, uh, uh, Mackenzie Davis. McKin- there we go. No, wait, okay. wait. Uh, you know what? Thank you for fact checking. You got me. Yeah, you it's got me Monday mixed morning. up on Mackenzie you're, you're Phillips. Right. You're right. Mackenzie Davis. Mackenzie Phillips was on. Do- what? Ed? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mackenzie Davis. Mackenzie Phillips. Didn't she sure. also was the kid in the uh, sitting next to yes. Harrison Ford in the movie? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. American yeah, that was Graffiti. The American Graffiti. Yes. Right, yeah. Not Mackenzie Phillips, folks. Mackenzie Davis. I'm talking Mackenzie Davis. Gotcha, gotcha. Who's like 30 years old. There Mackenzie she is. Phillips is like, you know, not 30 years old, but yeah. Mackenzie Davis. There's there a go. little shot of her somewhere. Mm-hmm. Canadian. Anyway, she's in that show that uh, that show about the computers, which I found out they actually did a couple more episodes. I found them on like the the thing, the app, and I was like, oh, there's more episodes. After mm. they discovered the internet, then they they move on with it. So I started trying to watch catch up on those. Yeah, uh, yeah, and she's been in a bunch of movies. She's actually in the new Blade Runner. She has a role in the new Blade Runner. I, Mackenzie I, Davis. I set that down on my Check. calendar. Blade Runner twenty forty three. Yeah, I hope it doesn't suck though. I I don't. Yeah, the, the trailers I see makes it look fabulous. Yeah. So but she. Course, so you know. uh, uh, if you Google Mackenzie Davis. Uh, uh, the stuff that comes up. She had a role in The Martian. She was one of the NASA mm. tech people. Halt and Catch Fire, which is the computer show, which mm-hmm. she's really good in that. That's why I really I was watching. I was like, who is this? this, this she plays this this actor. Something, someone called that awkward, oh that awkward moment, which was an indie film she made as she coming up, and the Black Mirror episode, yeah, which is a fantastic episode. I can't really talk much about it mm. because then it's spoiler. Alerts. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just have to sit down and watch it. Just watch it. It just kind of takes place in time and. So she's in Blade Runner. To yes. Oh yes. Um, yeah, it's yeah. even more of a even yeah. more of a thing. Along with uh, um, uh, oh gosh, see the mind doesn't work well on a Monday morning. Even not enough coffee, <laughs> but along with um, you know, uh, what's her name? The one from uh, from uh, House of Cards. She's like got a big starring role in it. Okay, uh, Ro- Robin, Robin Wright. Wright. Thank you. Yes. yes. Who was up for, you know, House now, of Cards? I, yeah. I think did she win for House of Cards? Robin Wright. Lead actress drama Elizabeth Ma- Elizabeth Ma- Elizabeth Moss. I can't speak today. The Handmaid's Tale. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Robin Wright was for House of Cards. Of course. Mm-hmm. Which she was. She was very good this year. I mean, she's always good. Robin Wright. There's another, oh, yeah. yeah, you know, power. Out. So Robin Wright is. Uh, I think she's the head of the pol- chief of police thing, the Blade Runners. Oh, okay, I think, okay. Based on what I've seen, like all the trailers yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I think she's yeah. in the police you station. See, see, the cool thing about that movie now, it it, it comes out October sixth, which which happens it's to be soon. happens to be my birthday. Mm. So I got my whole birthday thing set up. I when I when I saw that, I'm like, oh yeah, Maybe yeah. I get my birthday, a... wake up and do a little Blade Runner. What you day know? is that? I have no idea. That's a day. <laughs> I think it's Friday. We should have a blowout. We should have a Jason blowout. Yeah, I turn I turn live. nineteen. Awesome. Yeah. You're looking it. Yeah, you yeah. know, hey. Someday you'll be able to grow some facial hair. Someday I'll be a man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so Elizabeth Ma- Moss. <laughs> yeah. Now, I haven't watched The Handmaid's Tale. I, I hear good things. Yeah. I saw the movie okay. years ago, and I haven't seen the movie since. And I have, it's been kind of hard to find. Look, it's never. I can't remember. I haven't seen it on Netflix. It had Robert Duvall, I remember. Um, and I can't remember the other cast. Uh, Sounds familiar, but I'm not sure if I've seen it. You know, these dystopian things aren't at the top of my list. Yeah. Because we're living in the dystopia, so, you know. Uh, So Handmaid's Tale was like, "Uh, yeah, okay. Like, even House of Cards was hard for me to get through this year, even though it was good. Frank. Yeah. Frank and Claire. Yeah, I mean, it's a little uh, Twin Peaks escapism works for me. Black Mirror. Well, Black Mirror is very social commentary too. Right. But anyway, uh, but Elizabeth Elizabeth Moss is she's great. Mm-hmm. She's fantastic, and she I'm 
like she's stars in The Handmaid's Tale. Great casting. She was always. I, I wonder if did she win an Emmy for? Uh, is this like her first or uh, did she? Man, she probably got something for Mad Men. Well, I mean, Madwin got Emmys, so. Yeah, I imagine she would have had to. Uh, yeah. From all the seasons that they've been on, you know that was. But on. this was a tough. <clears throat> this was a tough lead actress <clears throat> drama. Viola Davis, How to Get Away with Murder. Yeah. I, I don't know that one, but but they're saying it's real good. Claire Foy, The Crown. Wow. Yeah. They had the Crown up there, and the Crown the lost crown. the Crown. Now that was the one about the the series. Again, this is like. British Netflix, the I don't know. Queen. Yeah, she Queen plays Elizabeth. the Queen. That yeah. was a good one. I watched that whole thing. Yeah, I stopped. Yeah, I, I watched half of it. Uh, but like I said, <laughs> Moss won for The Handmaid's Tale. Carrie Russell, The Americans. I have not seen that show. I've heard I good hear. stuff about that. Yeah, good I'm, stuff, I and I it. sounds like it's right up my alley. Evan Rachel Wood, Westworld. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, she was great in that. So that was tough. And Robin Wright, House of Cards, of course. So, ooh, there's a new series on HBO. You have to check it. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's called. You know, we should it's just... called the Deuce. The... It takes place in the '70s in New York. Okay, and it's a. Uh, it's really gritty. It's a. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 written and produced by what Pellegrino or Pelliano or something. Yeah, he, that's what he does. The '70s. Oh, I do like those. Oh, it's it's good. You know, oh, having it's good. It's got. Maggie, uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Stuff like, you know, The French Connection and The yes. Seven Ups. And, there you go, yeah. You know, that sort of thing. Right. It, it, it's kind of a gritty... Was it Prince of the City? Wasn't that one? I, uh, I can't remember. Dog Day yeah. Afternoon. Oh, Dog Day Afternoon. Uh, See, no, they, they, yeah, it's you know, got that sort of vibe. There's all these new things. Yeah. And then there's a chrono where it's like, when was the last time like you were looking at the Harry Dean Stanton? It's like, when was the last time you saw, you know, Repo Man or something? It's like, well, I got to go put that back on my list because it's, uh, it's been years. You know, when was the last time you watched Pretty in Pink? I just know somebody Ooh. who just watched it and they were like, you know, that was a good movie. A year or like, two well, ago, I saw that. Of course, it was a good Molly movie. Molly Ringwald, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Sterling K. Brown, This Is Us. I've heard of that uh-huh. one. Anthony Hopkins was nominated for Westworld. Wow. Um, yeah. Kevin Spacey, House of Cards, you know, yeah. um, The Americans. Nicole Kidman. Big Little Lies. She oh, she won lead actress limited series TV. I mean, you just go through these. I mean, at some point, you know, it, it's <laughs> sort of like it's like the Emmys. They should have enough to go around. Like at some point, you get nominated and you win. <laughs> right, right. Right. Yeah. Stick I, around long enough, and you'll probably win it. Anyway. Uh, oh, hey. Um, this just in. I'm getting word from the uh, producers. Yes. This just in. You have just won an Emmy. Oh. Right, there right. You go. All right. Uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus, uh, Veep for lead actress comedy. That's yeah. what she won that one for. Uh, uh, lead actor comedy, Donald Glover, Atlanta. Now, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, don't I haven't know, seen it, haven't even heard of it. But correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Donald Glover will be the new Lando Calrissian. In the next next Ooh. Star Wars movie. Ooh. Yeah, I believe so. Ooh, that's provocative. No, he was cast. Yeah. Um. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think he was cast as. Okay. Now is he like Danny Glover's? I don't. Yeah, I don't he know. He was the young Landau Calrissian in the. Han- I, I want to say yes. I want to say he's 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 one of the kids of Danny Glover. You, well, you would. But I don't I mean, know. It's kind of a famous name. You yeah. don't know, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, 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 I don't yeah. know much about his career. I just know that he was cast as, yeah, I, hmm. and so apparently he's got a TV show, but I know that he was cast as, I as in that. later. So, so the new Star Wars movie, the next episode comes out. The, the Last year, Jedi. And the year after that, the next year, comes uh, Han Solo, the early years or whatever. Ooh. The Wonder Years. That is now directed, <laughs> that Wonder now, by years. the way, is directed by Ron who's, Howard. Who's playing Winnie? Well, it's directed by Ron Howard. Wow. Because you remember, they, you, did this happen when we were off? They fired the directors. Yes. They've been firing the Star Wars directors. Musical directors. They, in fact, they fired the, the director of the last, last Star yeah. Wars movie. Yeah. I mean, it's getting crazy out there. If I tune in to like, the, that movie from Ron Howard, you know, if I tune into it and they do the opening for the Wonder Years, I think, 
Whoa, what do you say? Well, what would you do if I sang out I, of tune? I, no, no, no. The thing, the like, thing oh, about God. the Ron Howard Han Wars. Solo movie is going to be this. It's like, he's going to be like sitting there talking to Danny Glover as Land of Cross. It's like, remember, and Chewie will back me up. I did the Kessel Run in 3.4 parsecs. And then the narrator will look. But he actually didn't. He actually did. You know, in yeah. the narration. Right, the, yeah. The arrested development. The whole, like, narration in the background, you know. Right. It's like. This was the moment that he knew. Yeah, exactly. That, right. Yeah. That'll be the Ron Howard version has, of the Young Hansel. Has Clint Howard passed on? No, come on. Because you know, because you know, if, if oh Ron Howard does it, he's going to put Clint in a movie because he puts Clint in every one He'll of those movies. He'll be like a bartender. It, or exactly. Something. He'll be See? like a galactic. Right. You're killing me. Right, because no, he, he puts Clint, him in the movies Clint's all the time. He's 58 years old. He was his God father, bless. Rance Howard, that God, passed away. Yeah, a couple God of years bless ago. Clint Howard. Clint, Clint Howard, yeah, he's going to end up in it. Oh, I can't wait. Speaking of which, I want him to be like a Wookiee. For some weird reason, you just read my mind because. I pulled this up the other day, and I always wanted to say, wow. I always wanted to say, yeah. who the hell casts a little kid with a bear in a TV show? <laughs> That's Clint Howard, young Clint Howard, Yeah, yeah. Uh, when they were younger, and he was the star of a show called Gentle Ben, set That's in right. the Everglades, with a giant, scary, trained bear, but still, yeah, something that could rip your head off. Dennis Weaver. You never know Clint, about those Clint earth Howard. signs, man. They could go off any time. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Clint. Yeah, you're right, though, because because every he's every, he's in every Ron Howard yeah. movie has got, I mean, uh, Apollo so, Apollo 13. Right, he plays he, one of the guys up there the on the screen. He was the engineer Like, oh, that's awesome. So he's going to end up being a... But it, they'll put him in prosthetic. He'll be like, you know, he'll be like... Um, uh, uh, Can they make him an Ewok? Oh yeah! Here he's in there. He's just like nah, 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 nah. that'd be awesome. He was Look a it. Ferengi. Oh, did, there's a picture of him right here. Star Trek interview. That's right. He was he was a Ferengi. Here's a picture of him right here. That's right. I'm guessing Deep Space Nine. Yeah. Look at that. We forget the great Clint Howard was a Ferengi. Wow. I'm guessing that was a Deep Space Nine episode. It's got to be. I think they're the only ones with Ferengi. Could have been. In it. I don't know. People are going to scream at us. We need we need our fact check. Well, wasn't which DS9? we will be bringing online very soon. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, a real time fact checking stuff. I like Clint Howard. Yeah, he's had. Wasn't it? Um, you know, one of my favorite. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, okay. Okay. But Ron wrote and I think he wrote and directed fantastic Michael Keaton movie uh, yeah. drama. I know. Oh, okay. No, it was a drama. Oh, for a minute, I thought you were gonna go for his uh, the comedy. Well, right. there's tons of comedies. I mean, with, Ron Howard. Ron. No, the one with Michael Keaton. He yeah. made a drama. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. Clean and sober. Clean and sober. Yes. Which was like you know Ron's making all these comedies. Michael Keaton's making these comedies. All of a sudden, uh, there's all of a sudden clean and sober. It's yeah. like, oh, hey, go get the popcorn. I'm gonna watch a Ron Howard, Michael Keaton movie. Yeah. Whoa, what's this? This about a drug addict and this where's is, the jokes? Yeah, right? this is heavy, man. Yeah, where's the jokes? Very, very good movie. Yeah. Excellent movie. Yeah. And then, and then, and then uh, Michael Keaton gets Batman, and everyone's like, whoa. <laughs> right. But, but, um, I, I believe that was somewhat based on his brother's life. That he really? based that a little bit on Clint's life. Clint, Clint had, like most child yeah. actors, I believe. I can I can see that. Yeah, he had some rough patches in his yeah. uh, what, teens and early 20s. Oh, fav, fav, one of my favorite Clint Howard moments is the movie Night Shift. Yes. Where he gets in I there. Oh, man. Because the guy's going to the prom and he like they take over the hearse mm -hmm. for the prom. Hey kid, you like music? And he goes, "Dad, just starts doing humming, jumping, jumping Jack Flash." You know, and, mm -hmm. and Clint gets down with it. Also, little known fact number two thirty eight. Jason's little known fact. Did you know? Did you know that in in the uh, scene where uh, Henry Winkler walks into the morgue, and the morgue has been taken over by Keaton and some buddies, uh, a fraternity or whatever, and they're throwing a party in the middle of the morgue. Mm -hmm. Right, one of the frat brothers who has like, I, I don't know if he has any lines, but he's in there. Is Kevin Costner? Look for oh, it. Oh wow, he's wow. in there. Yeah, a young Kevin Costner. That's me. That's listen, folks. What I'm doing right now is I'm giving you a, a public Aww. service. Jason's, v, v, you know, uh, the vault of uh, 
unimportant things. You know? I just have to go the back. Vault of use- I am the vault of useless information. Well, there's even I more. Clint Howard. So I, I'm actually look. The National Enquirer pulled this up, and it yeah. was indeed. It would, I'm not going to pull it up, but. And I can't get out of this now. Thank you. I'm being hijacked. Um, but uh, <laughs> being, being national hijacked. car. But yes, yeah. it was it was about you know Clint Howard and Ron actually got him into AA and he's sober wow. now and all that stuff and acting and doing all this great work. But yeah. it was like saying and I believe that that was the inspiration. Clean Ron said sober. that that movie was the inspiration from. I'm gonna have to watch with that these. again with it's that a, in mind. It's such a good drama. Yeah, it's such a good drama. I mean, it really is a very, very good movie. Michael Keaton is excellent in it. Yeah. Um, yeah, another one we forget about Clint Howard. You want to talk about when he was a kid? He was acting in everything. Star Trek. That's right. Star Trek. He played like one of those watchers car- or whatever it no, was. The carbonite maneuver. Mm. Carb, I believe it is. He's yeah. the little. Well, no spoilers. No, no, I, I, I know, I, I got the, the I got his picture maneuver. in Star Trek in yeah, my head. Carbomite maneuver. Um. Yeah, it was Star Trek, yeah. and, and this was before Gentle Ben, so he was like really young. Yeah, yeah. Clint Howard as Baylock. Baylock. Little kid, remember? Remember they're being chased by this spaceship, and this weird ghoul comes up, this giant ghoul oh, yeah, yeah. and stuff, and they're trying to get out of it. And they're they're the it's a very powerful ship, and so Kirk uses Baylock uses his his savvy mind, mm-hmm. and they come up with the the carbomite maneuver, gotcha, which is actually crap. <laughs> it's actually not. Yeah. He, he basically bluffs him. It's a poker game. He bluffs the alien out. Yeah. He's like, well, you know, if you keep doing this, we're going to have to invoke the carbomite maneuver. And this is Starfleet's best. And uh, yeah. it, and he tells he tells the alien, uh, this sector of the galaxy like the Kobe, will be cor- Kobe will be quarantined for 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 centuries mm. after this is done. Mm. So, calls his bluff. I, no spoilers, but you know. And then they go there and they get on the ship, and there's a little Clint Howard, yeah, little kid, like yeah. I got, I got, I got his picture, yeah. you know, of the sh- in the show. I've got a picture in my brain right now. And I'm now. trying to think. Yeah. I think they dubbed his voice, so he's got. Wasn't so, he like laying on cushions or something like yes, that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I could pull it up. God, look at how we like, just go off on a tangent because it, it happens. that's what we do. Yeah, look, it's we should name our show instead of Coffee with Curmudgeons. It should be called But I Digress. Yeah, but I digress. <laughs> oh, yeah. somebody had actually photoshopped what he looks there like. There we go. Now. Yeah, this one right here. That's a classic. It's a classic yeah. Star Trek. You can see that there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here he is. See? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's just like a little little kid. So I mean, he had some Star Trek yeah. pedigree before right. he like even played that. I totally f- forgot that. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. So much going on. So uh, did we kind of kill the Emmy idea here? So Donald Glover. Oh, we didn't even talk about Spicer. Uh, Kate. Oh, okay. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, right here. Supporting actress comedy. Uh, who, who, here's the thing. Vanessa Bayer. I like her. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I like the ladies on Saturday Night Live, actually. Mm-hmm. All of them. Mc- Vanessa McKinnon. Bayer. Leslie Jones mm-hmm. and Kate McKinnon yeah. all were all were nominated. All three were nominated from SNL for Best Sporting Actress Comedy. And who won? Kate McKinnon. Yeah. Yeah. So Kate McKinnon. I don't like Kate McKinnon. She does a mean Hillary Clinton. Well, man. that's kind of... Well, I, and I think... I think that that's kind of part of the thing, the Hollywood, you know, the yeah. anti and yeah. this and that and everything. Baldwin for Trump. Alec McKinnon. Baldwin wins yeah. the Trump. Kate McKinnon wins the Hillary Clinton thing. I mean, I have to admit that the episode, I will say the episode that Saturday Night Live did that Hillary Clinton was actually on, yeah. that Kate McKinnon played, yeah. was, was good. I mean, that was a one, it was like, it was sort of like, can you do more stuff like that as a candidate? Because there was like a big bartender thing where Kate McKinnon comes in as Hillary Clinton in her, you know, yeah. and she's at the bar and she's like kind of complaining about politics. And the actual Hillary Clinton was the bartender <laughs> and serving in there having this discussion back and forth. And it was, yeah. it was all right. Yeah. Supporting actor comedy, Alec yeah. Baldwin, Saturday Night yeah, Live. There you go. 
You know, here's the one, though. Titus Burgess, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. He's pretty funny. He's real good. That's my 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 kid got me into Unbreakable yeah. Kimmy Schmidt. Came out what, a few years ago. I'm not sure what season we're in, and I haven't caught up. Hmm. But we were. I was watching it with a kid a couple of years ago when it came out, and okay. she was a huge Titus fan. Yeah, he's a yeah yeah. He's 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 funny. Hmm. Uh, a couple okay. people from Veep. So yeah. yeah. Uh, Supporting actress drama and Dowd the Handmaid's Tale. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Um, see Westworld. Thandie Newton Westworld. She she was nominated. That. Yeah. I don't. Did you? You haven't seen the Westworld, have you? I've I've I can't, I've seen half. Oh okay. Well, you have <laughs> Thandie seen, Newton. She's yeah, yeah. like yeah, yeah. You know. I don't know. She. I mean, she's the kind of the brothel mm-hmm. lady, mm-hmm. but. There's yeah. a lot more going on there with yeah. There's a lot with her lots, character. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Uh, the Crown did win one. John Lithgow won for John the Crown. John Lithgow because he played Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill yeah. which was very good. He did good. He did very good on it. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. That was a very good one. So I mean, you know, yeah. I don't know. Whenever I see John Lithgow, no matter if he's playing, you know, comedy he's or drama, yeah. I. The weird thing my brain works is I always shoot back to uh, Buckaroo Banzai. Oh, wow. 20, see, there's one connection. I haven't seen in a long, long, long time. I love that movie. The, but I haven't seen it in a long, long time. Yeah. I mean, it's classic. Peter, Peter it's a Weller. Cult, it's a cult, uh, it's a cult uh, classic. It is, yeah. Buckaroo Banzai. Peter Weller, yeah. Yeah. Who went on to become a, 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 a uh, he's, I think he just got his, like a year or two, got his doctorate. He, oh, wow. When he left Hollywood, get a little of this, right? Peter Weller leaves Hollywood, well, becomes a history professor at Syracuse. Really? Believe it or not, yeah. Peter Weller. Yeah, huh. I believe he just got his PhD a couple of years ago, so he's he's uh, he's uh, really hard in academia. Peter Weller, yeah. Quit, really? Quit Hollywood and became a history professor. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Uh, personal life. In 2004, Weller, Weller completed a Master of Arts degree in Roman and Renaissance art at Syracuse University. Yeah. And occasionally taught courses in ancient history mm-hmm. at the university in 2007. Jason, 10 years ago. Yeah. Weller began a PhD at UCLA in Italian Renaissance art history. In October 2013, he filed his dissertation. There we go. And was awarded his doctorate in 2014. There we go. A couple of years, a few years ago, yep. 2006, yeah. he married his longtime girlfriend and actress, Sherry Stowe. Hmm. I wonder if she's, I wonder if she's uh, uh, related to Madeline. Gosh, among the Stowe. guests were uh, Carrie Fisher. Wow. His wedding. But, mm. but <laughs> if you're in Hollywood and you know, well, know, would have known the late Carrie Fisher. Yeah. Wouldn't you invite her to your wedding or at yeah. least the reception? Yeah, he'd be yeah. like, uh, uh, "Carrie's got to come." You'd be calling her on the phone. Can you come to my? Can you? Can, can you? I mean, because that that would be the party in itself. You know, the the second she walks mean, into the room, yeah, it's a party. But I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean it in a good way because no, she was just a sing, she, singular character. Yeah, you know? when she passed away, people said she, she was. I mean, she was brilliant. She. Yeah. I mean, she was writing scripts. She was doing a lot of behind the scenes. Hollywood stuff and had the mind for it. Very you know? highly respected, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and which uh, I believe um, Carrie Fisher. I, I believe it's almost been a year now. Coming up, it's yeah. coming up. Yeah, can you believe it? Can you believe this year? Okay, so yeah. so we have all these nominations. I know we're getting Laura Dern, Big Little Lies. So she she won it. Uh, another Alexander Skarsgård, Big Little Lies. I. Again. Alexander Skarsgård. Yeah, yeah, he was in True Blood. He's uh, the kid of uh, Skarsgård, the other guy. Guest actress, yeah. drama, The Handmaid's Tale. Like so, so there's just tons of these. There's mm. lots of these. This is Us, that show. I've heard about it. Oh, uh, here's another SNL. Like I said, it's like SNL, SNL. It's a guest actress comedy series. Melissa McCarthy, oh, I, Saturday Night Live. I loved her as Spicer, man. Yeah, she obviously she was good. Um, guest actor comedy, Saturday Night Live. Dave Chappelle. Oh yeah, and that was well deserved because yeah. that was that was probably one of the best 
episodes I've seen in recent Heck, memory. His, his opening monologue. His opening monologue was was a brilliant piece yeah. of comedy and political social commentary. Social he, commentary. I know we were all like, okay, can he just please be back on television again? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Saturday Night Live really cleaned this thing up. You know. They were, you know, this last year, they were very, very active. Yeah. yeah. I know, but it's kind of... Narrator. Meryl Streep, five came back. Ooh. There yeah. you go. Narrator. Um, oh, you know, you know, uh, uh, here's... here's Robert De Niro was nominated for one. He was in the audience. Because... Mm. Uh, Bobby D. Um, variety talk show last week tonight with John Oliver. Again, not too political of a show. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, no, it's not, well, no. they didn't give it to Bill. Variety Sketch Series, Saturday Night Live. So, like, Saturday Night Live just cleaned up all the Emmys. Reality TV show, mm-hmm. Shark Tank. Ah, okay. And so part of the, part of the, uh, so here's my assessment. Mm-hmm. I watched the whole Stephen Colbert thing. Yeah. Uh, he, d- he does a musical. Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't, he's, I don't, I mean, it's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, he comes mm-hmm. out, because they do the musical number. Yeah. Um, and he did some jokes, uh, and uh, and he he mentions one of his jokes, and I'm not gonna play it because it's CBS, right? What does CBS do? Oh, you can't put that up on the internet. Thanks, yeah. CBS. Yeah, CBS. Um, but anyway, uh, he he does a joke, and he says, you know, uh, Trump was nominated for. Emmys for <laughs> right. The Apprentice. Right, yeah. And he yeah. lost each time. And they even pulled up a tweet like of him going, the Emmys are losers and yeah. all that stuff. And Colbert was like, you know, folks, if you would have just given him an Probably Emmy. Probably would have still been you know, doing it. Yeah. yeah, we could. It's, it's the. It's uh, your, he basically said, it's your fault. <laughs> right, yeah. It's, so. the, it's the whole uh, Fidel Castro scenario. Yeah, because if they if the Washington Senators just would have offered Fidel a contract, exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah. that will be that will be our Black Mirror episode that we write and hand in. Ooh. the one we write. It'll be uh, Castro because every every alternate history sci fi is always right. We make peace with the Hitler or something, and then there's yeah. like the Hitler thing. There's a whole show, it's like like another like there was a show, and I didn't watch it, and I heard that people were like, eh, or it looked kind of, you know, another one of those. Well, what if Hitler was still around and then not, yeah. you know, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, stupid, but but uh, 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 ours would be uh, mm-hmm. Castro. Yeah, becomes a, ba- a Cuban baseball star. Yeah. And and Trump, when Trump, you know, Trump. T- takes home like Emmys every for four straight years for The Apprentice, and so he decides he fired. Just, he's not getting into politics because he's winning Emmys. He ends up hosting the Emmys. Trump. Wow, that's a mind blower right there. Right, he he's up there do doing a. You know, I'm so next for short form is. Yeah. Well, I think that's a thing. You know, it, it's isn't pretty much Trump Hollywood's nightmare. I mean, if you really look at the left coast, if you really look at Los Angeles. Hollywood's bastard child, I mean, okay, Donald Trump. Maybe not Mel Gibson, but yeah. the rest of Hollywood. Ooh. You know. Yeah, he's king of the meltdowners, yeah. You know, I mean, the rest of the uh, the rest of Hollywood. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's pretty much, right? I mean, he comes in with The Apprentice. He's got a reality series. I, I mean, I guess it was, I'm sure it was nominated for, I mean, it was a popular so I never pretty, watched it. I'm pretty sure it was, it was not nominated and didn't win. Actually, I think most real. I'm not a big reality. I TV. do not watch. Yeah. Re- I I almost refuse to watch reality TV. Yeah, as we sit here and talk, <laughs> we'll, we'll make our own reality TV. But uh, uh, that's a, ooh, I like that. But do that. Well, that's how we'll win the enemy. Uh, enemy. <laughs> I can't. Talk that's how to we're me. gonna win the enemy win and the, the enemy. enemies. <laughs> Kim Jong Un will be. Right. Giving a, we have a major award in North Korea. It's so called the Boom Boom Award. Come on over. Coffee with the hey, oh, yeah, we'll we, be right on. We give him the first crummy. Here's the first crummy, <laughs> Rocket Man. Oh my gosh. Um, so we win the, the hearts and minds. Emmy. Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, so so Hollywood didn't like him before. No. Like they didn't like him 
you know, he's New York, he's doing this stuff. I mean, he rubbed a lot of people wrong way, but he had the media empire. He had the apprentice. He was, you know, they were doing good. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was, you know, but Hollywood didn't, I, don't, I think they didn't, didn't embrace him. Even before the politics and the presidency. Yeah. In fact, so it's uh, kind of like Hollywood just woke up with this collective, uh, uh, you know, scream, <laughs> you know, the painting. Yeah. Of course, you know? Hollywood has never really embraced uh, uh, reality TV, though. I mean, well, they have an award for it. They do. Fargo was mm-hmm. nominated, didn't win anything. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting. No, but you're right though. He was always he was always considered, at least in Hollywood circles, an outsider. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it yeah. may may have been the New York thing. You're you're right. I I don't know. So uh, I did mention that the Black Mirror send you. It, it won yeah. for uh, writing for limited series. Charlie Booker, okay. he's a British guy. That was well deserved. If, if there's one thing you want to, well, one thing that I've seen on this list, go watch that episode. It's on Netflix. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Okay. So it just keeps going. But the big losers were, uh, well, the big mm-hmm. winner. Let's just say the big winners were Saturday Night Live. Right. If you yeah. were a part of Saturday Night Live, chances are, maybe if you weren't one of the, if you weren't one of the 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 uh, female lead actresses, right. Who right. were all competing against each other. They won so many Emmy Awards. They they get, even got one like Best Boy well, and uh, Grip. Now Le- <laughs> Leslie and yeah. Kate were both in the Ghostbusters. Yes. I wonder if the other if uh, the other uh... M- McCarthy was in it too. Yeah, that's right. So, so, so that begs that begs the question. Here's where we need the fact checker. Mm-hmm. When they did the reboot of uh, and the remake of Ghostbusters, was that an SNL sort of? Did one of the producers? Have a connection. Yeah, it with could that. have been because it seems that there's, there's well, an awful lot of like, what's his connections name? Uh, to SNL. Lauren Michaels uh, is always there, and Lauren Michael, yeah. you know, he like produced the Portlandia yeah. thing, which last Fred season Armstrong. going there. Yeah. I think Portlandia had a nomination or two. Um, so, so yes, so you've been alluding to this for a long time. The political moment was mm. when. Um, uh, and again, I'm not going to play this because if I play this, I think CBS does. Probably. They they hate YouTube. The, the algorithm. They're just hammering you. But anyway, the big thing that happened there was Colbert was like, oh, we got a great crowd and everything. Uh, you know, I wonder, there's a crowd. And then Spicer comes out with the movable podium. Yeah. podium yeah. And he says, this is the biggest crowd that's ever been in <laughs> Emmys and all that stuff. Yeah. And then the podium, and everybody laughs and is surprised. And then the podium goes away and he says, thank you, uh, Melissa McCarthy. So, ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. Uh, that was the joke. Yeah. That was all right. It was all right. It was funny. There was a, there was an article I read about that. You know, uh, where that it was a very negative article too. Like the, like yeah, I can't believe that the Emmys are normalizing. You know. Oh yeah, I actually like, may but, have. Uh, well, the Hollywood Hollywood Reporter, which is actually very good. Uh, I, I think they're good. Emmy snubs Westworld feud shut out in major categories. Mm. You know. Other yeah. series that failed to receive any awards on Sunday's televised show included Stranger Things and Fargo. So yeah. Hollywood Reporter yeah. was not very happy. Um, there was one that... that uh, Deadline. Here it is right here. I had it here. Emmy's TV review Donald Trump Overkill stains Stephen Colbert's hosting debut mm. on Deadline. So gotcha. there you go. Stain. So yeah, so there was some negative, and I can yeah. see that again. You, did you, you did you watch no. the whole thing? Yeah, neither did I. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I, I don't. I actually don't like awards shows. Sometimes I, I got to admit. Sometimes I watch the Oscars. Yeah. Okay. That's the one that I think people yeah. watch, and usually that's um, that's the one that's when you people have os you know a cat a party. It's yes, like on the Sunday after, night, right. and you have like you get together with friends, yeah, and have a party, uh, yeah. or you guess that that's all really Oscar fun. Parties, like yeah. you make it kind of a, a thing, and yeah. then you all sit there and you go, "Yeah, uh, I haven't watched that movie. I didn't see that movie. I didn't see that one. <laughs> I that haven't one. seen any of them." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you kind of like when you if you're gonna go to the Oscar party with the friends and do that, you yeah. gotta actually kind of binge figure out. Oh, I better go. See some of those nominated movies, right? And see yeah. which one I like, yeah. right? But yeah. you guess, you know, and then you That's gain right, yeah. the guessing always with the Oscars because it's not necessarily about like you know I saw that movie and I thought her performance was brilliant. No, 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 no. it's like mm, she's an older 
actor. Uh, this is her comeback, and yeah. she's having health issues. So I'm thinking the Academy Awards going to give it to her. You know, mm-hmm. that that sort of thing, right? You know, mm-hmm. you, you game the Academy because it's all a game. And here's oh, the there's thing. a Vegas line on all that stuff. Who, yeah, who wins? Yeah. You know, and the whole thing about it is, yeah. folks. Why are we having these like competition <laughs> awards for art anyway? Because why? It's America, right? America. America. We gotta, we gotta like get that team in there, fight, yeah. fight, fight. And you know what they do like for the Academy a- Emmys? I'm sure is, is the same. Yeah. And I don't know how they do it online now, but you know, Variety, the industry broadsheet yeah. paper. I assume they still print it, but I mean, it's up on web. Variety. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Well, yeah. what they'll do, like for Academy Awards, I know this, and I assume for the Emmys, they'll the production. You know, the studios will run a full page ad, going, mm-hmm. you know, Tom Hanks was great in that Apollo thirteen, right? Right? Mm-hmm. Nominated, right? To kind of influence the the voters of, of the Academy. Because after after the award show's over, and if it wins, they're gonna mm-hmm. throw it back into the theater. You know, hey, look, Oscar winning movie, hoping that people will pay additional money. It's business. Money. It's yeah, business. It's total business. I mean, if you win an Emmy or an Oscar, right. that's your uh, that that means you're being validated, yes. and so the audience is like, well, I want an Oscar. I maybe I should go see that movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's how studios work. It's a business. Yeah. But art really is no, personal. Right. It's funny. It's, People it's, need to die poor for their art. I'm they sorry. Need the starving artists. No, no but I don't the, know. The, it's the Oscars and the Academy Awards was much in the early days was a lot like the SAG Awards. Industry is a kind of an industry yes. thing that uh, I like. If you go up on YouTube, yeah, you can find films of the earliest days yes. of the Academy Award, and it's just like a dinner just among, a amongst dinner themselves party. in a hotel, yeah. you know, thing giving you know for camp cinematography, camera, yeah. Yeah. yada yada, editing, yada 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 yada. Well, here, and here's it's turned here, into a that brings up know. a good point, Jason. Mm-hmm. Here's my problem with these award shows, okay, and how these work. Um, it, it, so, back in the old days, there was the insight. You're in the industry. You're in Hollywood, right? You're the insider. Yeah. Like, and you do the like the SAG Awards, like the Academy Awards. Originally, was a dinner, dinner theater party kind of thing. And arts they, and science. Oh, and here we've got right. some SAG. You won. Okay, thanks. You yeah. know. Um, but then it became like a general audience kind of thing. And the general audience basically pop culture. Yeah, it's like we yeah. now have become insiders into that, and it's gotten worse and worse. Like where you're like, uh, who's getting cast for this? Star Wars, great example, right? Mm-hmm. Who do I care who directs Star Wars? Just make the dang movie and put it out there, and give me a good movie, and I'll watch right. it as an audience member. What? Who do I care? Is there a feud with Kathleen Kennedy and her directors for the Star Wars franchise? I mean, that's like insider business. Well, the, Disney's multi-billion dollar business. Look, look at the boutique industry of shows that have come along that, that do nothing but cover that. Uh, Access Hollywood started that way. Entertain, yeah. Entertainment Tonight was purely a show dedicated for go- gossip in in uh, mo- you know the entertainment m- movie scene. Yeah, you know? but y- y- you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Though it's just like kind of kind of this insider, like uh, we mm-hmm. over. Like our lifetime, the audience, the general audience. We'll call the, ourselves the general audience. The yeah. movie going, TV watching audience. Well, we're now so clued into the yeah. productions of these things and yeah. and how. I mean, it, it, I know you hate me for because I'm Twin Peaks, <laughs> but but a great uh, yeah. no, a great example of that yeah. was leading up to the production of this new season of Twin Peaks. Yes, what's going to happen? How are they going to do this? Well, it. Well, it was like it yeah. was announced, and then Mark Frost, the writer, David Lynch, yep. the director, yes, Twin Peaks, Showtime. And then famously, Showtime and Lynch had a negotiation issue yeah. for the basically the budget. Yeah. And that hit all of the news sites and all the fans and everyone's, oh, my gosh, yes, no, you know, all the think pieces and articles leading just, up to it. And then it all got worked the money, out. Man. Well, it all worked out. But <laughs> yeah. we were all right there. Yeah. You know, and Lynch himself, they'd ask him about it and go, and, and they asked him about it after the fact, after, you know, this thing launched. And it's like, oh, tell us about that whole thing with you and not coming back to direct and Showtime yeah. and what happened between them. There was a dispute and whatever. And he was like, look, 
I'm just I'm an artist guy. They're the producer people. This yeah. is part of the business. Yeah. You negotiate the budget. I have a vision. I you know he's basically like I have a vision. I need this budget to create my vision. Yeah. I want you know, and in the end of the day, Showtime just pretty much said you're David Lynch. Or you, they right blank checked it right. Right. But they have to run a business too. Right. And yeah. then and then while this show was going on. While this uh, this new Twin Peaks was going on, what were we reading every week? Oh well, you know, yeah. Game of Thrones is getting this many viewers, but Twin Peaks is not. This. But then when you look at the streaming and the people, I, who cares? Yeah, who yeah. the hell cares? Yeah, if you're just in the audience, you're either watching it and enjoying it or not. We do, do just too much, too much. Well, yeah, I mean, too if much. You, we're too you, analytical about this crap anymore. If you're not a studio suit. Why are you paying that much of attention to how much the take is off, you know, net and gross and all that stuff? It, it, like, watch not, it if you like it and don't if you don't. Not to sound yeah. like too much like Bernie Sanders, but Jason, I blame yeah. Wall Street. I blame yeah. Wall Street all of this. Yeah. That's no, right. I mean, you know, really, like everything's like Wall Street. Everything's yeah. like you got to know the analysis to the minute and yeah. all that. And it's kind of, yeah. well, screwed up our art here in the... Western world. Well, it's when the bean counters. You think counters... the Romans were like that? Because they were oh, an sure. empire like us. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. There was tons of Roman bean counters. But like, you know, yeah. were they bean counting their art, their statues, and their, sure. you know, probably, oh, right? Yeah, because back, back, in day of, back in the day of the Caesars, I mean, all the money that went towards that was in the general treasury and... Of course, you know, you had other guys like consuls and stuff who weren't exactly... I know someone who we could ask. Yes. This Dr. Peter Weller. Yes, yes. <laughs> he probably knows. You're right. But, yeah, oh, yeah, there are bean counters. There's, there's hey, plenty, RoboCop, uh, <laughs> tell us about the economics of <laughs> Roman art back in the... Um, I hear that's your expertise. Why, yes, it is. But, Put down that <laughs> weapon, <laughs> punk. Um, back in the reign of Trajan. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, did, wouldn't you want to be in his class, right? And just like be. Come on, do Robocop. Yeah. Do Sit down, kid. I'm not going to. Come on. F. Yeah. Right. Buckaroo Bonsai. Did it, you know. It's Caligula Punk. Yeah. I mean, he still acts. He still does From stuff. time to time. I mean, yeah. he, was, he was in uh, one of the newer Star Trek movies a, a while back. Yeah, and he does a lot of uh, um, narration for like documentaries oh, yeah. and stuff. Peter Weller. Well, that's a good Or deal. now, Doctor. Peter Weller. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was very intrigued because when I saw him on a... This has got to be 10, 15 years ago. He's on the History Channel there and he was doing a uh, yeah. thing. And then he let slip the fact that he, you know, was Syracuse University. He's like a professor. No, I'm I didn't like, know that. I wow, learned something Peter today. Weller. Something you learned today. Yeah. That Smart dude. RoboCop. Right. RoboCop's a PhD a, and a professor. Yeah. Who yeah. knew? Yeah. Well, Buckaroo so. Banzai was a doctor, wasn't he? Wasn't he a PhD? He was a lot of. He was a lot, a lot of, of stuff. stuff. He yeah. was kind of. Wasn't he kind of like a the Doc Savage of kind of the cult? Kind almost, of almost Doctor like, Who ish, almost. You like know. Doctor Who, Doc Savage, yeah. kind of. Yeah, yeah. Like he was kind of everything. Like you know, if you, did you ever did you ever read or any yeah. of the Doc Savage? Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, Doc Savage was sort of that the man on of, man of action sort of. Well, and but he had uh, like Doc had all kinds of yeah. knowledge and yeah. skill, mad skills like. You know, kind of the the superhero superhero. You know, where it's a wide range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My favorite scene in Buckaroo Banzai is when they're on the stage and they're playing. You know, they start doing that song, Mm -hmm. and the lady out in the crowd, she drops her purse and a handgun falls out of the purse, and then the band stops the song and they all whip out stuff at her. Oh, she's like, oh, that's just my favorite part. That That is a good one. Cracks me up. That is a good one. But no. Well. Yes. I think. I think we, we covered a few of the headlines. Yeah, I was going to look yeah. here and see. Now, the, the one, th- well, we've had, since we've been gone, we've had hurricanes. <laughs> right, um, yeah. Boy, the Florida Keys. Although it looks like people pulled through. There's another one, Hurricane Maria. It's just uh, it's just this the, morning got up to uh, Category Puerto 3. Rica. I think it's going to be a rough one this year. Yeah. And I'm hearing here in the Northwest that we may have a rough winter, too. Yeah. The, El Nino, Nino. They said it was going to be kind of a, a mirror image of, of last, last year. Oof. Yeah. So basically, we're going to be snowed in. Evacuation orders issued in Puerto Rico as yeah. Hurricane Maria nears. Yeah, we're yeah. going to be snowed in 
uh, this year again, which will be really fun. We're going to have to... We'll be snowed in. We'll be doing the snow report. Right. We'll be like... We'll do our right. best Bob and Doug McKenzie. Right. Live from Timberline Lodge. Yes, That's, exactly. Yeah. Well, it was like Timberline <laughs> Lodge <laughs> earlier. We were seriously snowed in. Uh, this yeah. was this was an interesting item. Just uh, going through the the items, I did, I did um, pull this one out. Mm-hmm. Um, Stanislav Petrov, yes, the man who saved the world. Un- yeah, one of those unsung heroes. Dies at seventy seven. Yeah, the man who saved the world. Yeah, did now? Do you do you, do you remember this story here? Petrovian. He's a he was a uh, so submarine skipper. No, no, no. This is a different guy. Is it? I, I was gonna say. Uh, I thought it was that guy too. Okay. But this is a different guy. Okay. Uh, this guy was in charge of uh, missile defense. Okay. The ICBMs in eighty three September twenty sixth nineteen eighty three. He was on shift okay. in the early morning hours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, okay. the computer sounded an alarm indicating that the U.S. had launched five nuclear armed right. intercontinental ballistic missiles. Yep. At the Soviet Union, that's what his computer told him on September twenty sixth in eighty three. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his quote: "The siren howled, but I just sat there for a few seconds, staring at the big black." Backlit red screen with the word launch on it. Yeah. He told the BBC in 2013. Which, which, which shows you how scary it is if you understand old Soviet protocol. Mm-hmm. Uh, they was like, see, back then, you did not question anything. You just did. So when you saw the blinking lights and the mm-hmm. launch, you don't think you just push and, and well, go. And he, at that moment, that, that critical... You know, moments well, this, of history. He, he, it's yeah, and and one of the height uh, again, 1983, yeah. one of the height yeah. height of the Cold War. Like we are still more getting getting more information about how close we were in the brink of that yeah. that year yeah. of going to nuclear war. Yeah. With the Soviet Union. On September 1st of that year, the Soviet Union shot down a Korean Airlines plane yep. that had drifted into Soviet airspace, killing all 263 people. That, that was always a weird one. Wasn't the yeah. call sign of the plane 007? Something like that, yeah. It's, that's a yeah. real weird one. Kale. It was, you're right. It was it was a very weird time. It, it, and people forget now how ramped up tensions really were oh they were horrible like uh, the, the cuban missile because the the, yeah. we had the cuban missile crisis we had the uh which we had the submariner yeah guy who, who they own they lost communication and so the protocol was raise and launch yeah. against the u.s navy and they didn't no yeah so the, the, the uh, everyone's yeah. like oh those russians well you know a few of those russians pulled our butts out from the and then and petrov here decided not yeah. to launch. He was like, well, uh, I read, what I read was he looked at the thing and he said, he said that the, what kind of tipped me off is it was five missiles heading our way, five ICBMs. Yeah. He said everything that I had been trained is if a, uh, an attack was launched, you're going to throw everything yeah. at your enemy. Like yeah. It's not going to be five. No, because you never want to get caught with the stuff on the ground where it can't be used in the no, future. You're just, so you you're just fling. Yeah, the first yeah. launch is like put everything up. Spray and pray. Well, it's, yeah. you know, no one's going to survive anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so that was his thing that he was tipped off. He said, you know, this doesn't look quite right because if the United States yeah. were launching a, an attack, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna yeah. launch everything. And so he did not launch a counterattack, thank you, and right. start World War Three and a nuclear holocaust. And it turns out they had, a, is it a satellite or radar that was looking at a reflection of clouds that were misinterpreted by the computer, 1983, remember? Yeah. Um, that, 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 that was missiles, but it wasn't. Right. And then they fixed the code. <laughs> and then they fixed the code, yeah. But I mean, this was, uh, yeah, and then and then uh, after yeah. that, tensions rose even further, as they mentioned. Yeah. Abel Archer, yeah, Abel Archer, 1983, yeah. was the uh, a a a complete full on exercise by the Western Allies, uh, West Germany, the United States. Remember, this is Reagan. Uh, all of them uh, is if if a if a limited nuclear attack had broken out in Western in Europe. 
Yeah. And this was a whole exercise of all the NATO allies. And the Russians were the Soviet Union was pretty upset yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, moving tanks, moving things around. And this was, uh, yeah. uh, I believe, and drop off. This was before um, Glasnost. Oh, yeah. This was like on the brink, like really scary stuff. And, and, and Andropov, though, was... Uh, yeah. he Yuri. Yeah, he was the he was the knee jerk reaction after the death of Brezhnev, because by the end of by the end of Brezhnev, uh, they they considered Brezhnev too soft, mm-hmm. and then Andropov is the ex KGB, you know, hard hard hardliner. Luckily, he was an a, quite the elderly gentleman and didn't last. Him and him and uh, Chernyenko didn't last very yeah, long. No. but Andropov, uh, that's when tensions <laughs> were really high. He was they got colds. You know, Right, yeah, they got cold nine millimeter colds to the back of the head. In Lubi- well, I don't know in Lubyanka. <laughs> he yeah. just kind of got sick after eating the borscht, and that's right. Didn't come back. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Russian. Business. It's a Russian winter, man. Didn't make it. Didn't make it. Right. He ate the borscht. It didn't make it. But uh, yeah, yeah, during that time though, it was it, it, sometimes it was downright scary because Andro Andropov was uh, he he was yeah not a good dude. You know? Yeah, this was before Gorby. Gorbachev, yeah. Gor- like, Gorby. Let's, let's come in here and try to calm this down. We're yeah. like, we're, we may not have a Soviet paradise or a capitalist paradise to come home to. Hey, th- thank God, uh, you, you know, and, and a lot of people. I mean, yes, make make and say what you will of Ronald Reagan. Thank God, Donald Trump wasn't president during the well, Cold War. Can you imagine him and Gorby? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that, that you you never can no, tell. I I you know. never can tell. Um, <laughs> Uh, but but the, the 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 thing was is this guy did yeah. that, yeah. and then they able to watch it, which is funny because the article I read they mentioned a foreign TV show which everyone should go watch called Deutschland eighty three. Hmm. That's a really good one. It was on A and E. Okay. It was produced in Germany. And it's all about Abel Ooh. Archer, and it's all about East German spies and stuff, and it's very, very good. And, Stasi. Yeah. Well, having been there mm-hmm. around that time frame, actually just right in that time frame. Gee, Doc, what were you doing over there around that time <laughs> yeah, frame? Yeah, get out the, the toilet paper. I was getting, there, I was just buying some East German toilet that's paper. That's a cover. This is, <laughs> this is going to turn into some sort of bridge of spies thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I know. It was real, yeah, Oof. No, really, I just went to the East to get toilet paper, yeah. that's all. Yes, I was an 18-year-old super spy. <laughs> uh, Cloak and dagger. The West. That's right. What do you mean? They'll never here? suspect the 18-year-old. <laughs> um, what is in that camera? If is it film that, or is it something else? That's not too far from the truth, actually. Mm. Uh, so, so yeah, and, and, and the costuming and all that. The time period that they did in this Deutschland eighty three was really really good. I'm gonna check that out. You gotta check it out, check it out. man. You really like it. It brings you back to the Reagan days, yeah. and yeah. it's like again, it's like espionage across the border, and then you know the, they build up to Abel Archer. Um, okay, I'm so it's all based. Out. That's uh, tonight's homework. I'm and the news down. was, yeah, they're like Twin Peaks. They're working. They're filming wow. the sequel. The next. Season Deutschland eighty six mm. because it was popular and everyone's like, are you going to do another one? And so yeah, yes, Deutschland eighty six. Interesting. I know. I have to check that out. Uh, well, hopefully they I'm do, do that, and then it's like Deutschland eighty nine. YouTube right? has that, you think? YouTube, yeah. yeah. It was an A and E thing. I think you got to go find it. I'll dig it. I'm not sure. I'll dig around. Yeah, it's one I should try to figure out how to buy. I'll have one of the minions. Because I know that Twin Peaks yeah. is coming out for Christmas too, Ooh. which I'll be yeah, blue red. That that's yeah. gonna be one. But the the the, the Deutschland one, I would I would. Yeah, I got all the new, I got all the new. Uh, I don't get a lot of. I don't purchase a lot of yeah. lot of stuff. I'm I'm the streaming and all that. But yeah. the problem is, is then they take it off the streaming and you can't watch it. And if it's like something yeah. that's really good, like no, this is kind of. You gotta wait until it's very few sanctioned. Things. Very yes. few things. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna check it out then. I'm, I'll dig around for it. There was some other news, but I can't remember. Roll another flash. Camp- Rolling Stone is being sold. Really? Yeah. Wow. There you go. There we go. There's I know your... there was another campus shooter. 
Oh God, D- Jason, yeah. we're the feel good. No, I know. I was just, I was just so mentioning like, that in passing. Yeah, I know. But we, um, we don't like try to do like the hard, sad news. No, there's a lot of that. Hard and believe sad me. Oh yeah. Stick around for Wednesday. We'll talk hard. And yeah, sad. that's that's that's. We're, we're trying to like get you through your Monday. Yeah. Um, Five hundred and sixty-four likes. Come on, thousand. <laughs> I'm so crazy. I made this meme, and right. it was a funny meme. Okay. So, the, the, Geneva police confiscate euro bills clogging up toilets. No, oh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the other thing that I have not had a chance to uh, here in Portland, or there's this YouTube TV, which mm-hmm. I don't know what you like actual YouTube is doing TV now or whatever. Yeah. So it's available in Portland. So I, I'm not sure what that entails. Like, is that like dish or something? I don't know what that is. Anyway. Here's something. For, here's something from our youth. Mm-hmm. Toys R Us could file for bankruptcy this week. Uh, I can see Jeffrey that. the Giraffe has gone on hard times. Yeah, I hope he I doesn't could, hit the sauce. Brick and mortar. That's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, 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 actually, the one the one update that I wanted to bring up, and, and that's big. The big news around here: Eagle Creek fire. Yeah. Uh, we have been getting rain as of yesterday. Everyone here is relieved to get rain. We need the rain, and especially rain to help counteract these forest fires. And, you know, somebody somebody mentioned, and we got to wrap this up. Okay. It's time to wrap this up. But someone mentioned that the, the story that's been ignored is like half the Western, you know, I mean, we really bad fires. We mm-hmm. have it here yeah. in the Gorge and Eagle Creek, but California... Well, there's one in Southern Mon- Oregon too, right? Mon- yes, that's really yeah, bad. Yeah, actually bigger. Yeah, and then Montana. Yes, apparently. Yeah, and and no one's like talking about it. We're talking about hurricane hurricanes and stuff, but not these terrible, terrible forest fires. Right. But for us, Eagle Creek being the gorge, wiping out some really. I was sweating Multnomah Falls, man. Yeah. When they said it was creeping up well, on that, did, I was like, it oh. did burn thing. It just they saved the lodge. Yeah. Uh, cooler temperatures and a chance of precipitation are expected later this week. Okay. More than forty-one thousand acres. I'm I'm just trying to. Yeah. I've been trying to get an update on um, this. The big the big problem now with that area and I eighty four has been closed, but it's been opened, limited like this major yeah. highway going out east or west, west yeah. here at Oregon, Washington. Yeah, they've been diverting people up to S- SR-22. Yep. Up to Washington. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know people who are stranded here in Portland who have been trying to make it back. Huh. Um, so, uh, flash flood warning. Ah, uh, yeah. And that's because, basically, the, the fire has taken out vegetation, and so they're worried. They're, they're saying... Get prepared for landslides and all sorts of things. Right. And that will probably affect the highway again yeah. and close down the highway. So these these folks. And I, I'm just I'm just really I have to say the folks who go out and fight the fires and all that, the Heroes, young kids. Yeah. yeah. And then the They call them hot church, shots or something like that. They go out there. Yeah. And, and then the yeah. and the people who started this is this fire was started by fireworks. Yeah, kids kids throwing firecrackers in a ravine. And uh, last week, just in the last week, yeah, they found more kids starting uh, a fire with fireworks over in Hood River. Copycatters? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh, that's just. I mean, it's just like, what are you thinking? Someone yeah. said, I, and I, 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 because it's like, what do you do with this stuff? And someone said, uh, uh, um, you know, they should be sentenced to actually be a firefighter and <laughs> going out and do this stuff. And it was like, you made the mess. You clean it up. Yeah, that makes sense. It's yeah. like you know, you, here's how you. How you want to avoid jail time, kid? No, get out there and. Uh, so help. anyway, we'll be keeping an eye on that. Yeah. Um, that so, but mm-hmm. but the good news, at least the good news is cooler temperatures. There's been a lot of wind. Well, Sunday we were here, yeah. right? Yeah. Portland, Oregon. Oh, that was Saturday. That was Saturday. I went downtown. To go film a thing, mm-hmm. and again, mm-hmm. it was like pure smog, like you were in the middle of a campfire. Oh, it was, yeah, Portland, it, it's no, yeah. I remember Friday. It was the second being, time we had that being out Friday night, and it, yeah, it, and it just the winds it, were it smelled like way. a campfire. Yeah, yeah. Well, then you couldn't see. I mean, it was like a, a smog, and it's been that way. A week ago, when the fire started, we had that for several days, and then it yeah. blew off. The winds 
blew the other way, and then we're back again. Right, yeah. Friday night was yeah. the first time. I mean, I, I'd seen stuff on social media about people complaining of trouble breathing, kind of. for oh, for, it's for about 10 or 15 minutes, Conditions. I had a little trouble breathing on Friday. It was really weird. No. Can, it's, yeah. uh, <laughs> they, they do an alert, and they basically say, don't, don't breathe. <laughs> don't go outside. Don't breathe. If you, if you can help it, try not to breathe. Yeah. Yeah, it's that okay. bad. It was. So yeah. if you're wondering why people yeah. around in the Portland, uh, us Portlanders, are so excited to get this rain, it's like that's that's okay. part of it. It's just we, you know, trying to trying to get. Yeah. I don't know, but with rain comes thunderstorms and lightning, and that actually starts fires. So. Hmm. We'll see. Yeah, a, yeah. I I wish I could say something. I wish I could end on a on a happy note. note. You know? I mean, I guess if you were like uh, Saturday Night Live or mm-hmm. Alec Baldwin or something, you're. Kate we can end on a happy note. Good. Uh, let's, let's end on a happy note. Happy note is, uh, hey, you know, fall is here, and with that it means the return of like, a lot of cool TV. Yeah. And uh, one one new show, real quick, that I'm into now, The Orville. Oh yeah, Seth MacFarlane. I, I, I dig it. Watched that last like night. It, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and there was sports. We didn't even cover sports. No, nope. but we can do football that. Football happened. Ducks happened. We can. Beavers lost again. Yeah, we can do that later. Yeah, we'll be back. We'll be crunching. So our, we're scheduled to be back on Friday. Okay. Um, although I miss, I missed, I just missed doing the show last week. Really, really, yeah. this was like a hole in my life. We can bring a guest, and I got Ed. He's ready and raring to go. <laughs> I think he was ready last week. He was ready last week, but he's still he's still he's okay. good to go. Have you talked to him since last week? I have told him that I was sick and stuff. Okay. He, 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 so he I was think alerted. he was ready. Yeah, he was really ready. We, we had a guest scheduled for Monday, and I think the guest was thinking I left, that they were going to be on yeah, the show. Yeah, I, I left a message okay. on the social oh, well, media. Oh, well, that's good. And then, that's good. And then later on after I explained why okay. Friday, but he's he's Fantastic. good. He's good to go. Good. Yeah. All right. So yeah. you'll be back on Wednesday talking about politics. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and I'll, uh, try, I'll try to make it somewhat somewhat entertaining. Uh, yeah, we're planning on being back on Friday. I can't yeah. wait because um, man, I really miss doing this show. Uh, take care out there. Let's hope things don't blow up. See you later. I'm going to make myself a cup of good morning, America. You all want some? (coughs) It's the best damn coffee you're going to get anywhere, buddy.